So the weather is improving. The game's supposed to start 7-12. It's going to wind up starting a little bit later than that. The original kickoff time was 6:40, And right now, as we get ready to start the season, and we mean it this time, let's go to the public address announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, the Denver Broncos and the National Football League ask you to please stand and kindly remove your hats as we honor America with the singing of our national anthem. As performed this evening by the winner of NBC's Season 4 of The Voice, 17-year-old Danielle Bradbury. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's regular The bones bursting in air That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet Or the land of the free And the home of the Sports Authority Field in Denver as we get ready to start the season. Walt Coleman will be the referee tonight. You know, we looked at the Doppler chart and all of the rest and saw the views from the planes. The crowd was never told to take cover unless they felt that they should. We had some rain. We had a little bit of wind. I don't want to say it was an overreaction because you never know what could have happened with a localized storm. But Kind of looks that way right now, doesn't it? Well, that was the result. But player safety has been the discussion uh, during the offseason. And, of course, fan safety is always going to be paramount as well. No question. And the coin toss coming up. Of course, we've seen weather delays have become commonplace now. College football, pro football. Big one in the, I think, North Carolina, South Carolina game the other night. Baltimore is the visitor tonight. Here's the coin. The Bronco is heads. That's tails. It's your choice. You call the tails. These are heads. We're going to defer to the second half. We're going to see. And that means the Ravens will get the football to start the game. And of course, the. Uh, <laughs> Pleasant team made a year ago. Being exchanged. Once more to Michelle. All right, well, it's raining as hard as it has been, Al, again. I mean, we've had light rain, we've had heavy rain, and right now we're getting kind of these big drops, which is a little bit heavier than we've had. It's ironic because before the game, it was perfect down here. I was talking to the kickers, and they said there couldn't be any more perfect conditions. And then all this happened. Now, again, the wind has really died down. We'll see how this rain affects the surface, Al. All right, thank you, Michelle. And as I mentioned, we've been here since Tuesday. We saw this Tuesday in the late afternoon. Yesterday, same thing today. And then one more look at the radar. And then the last couple of nights, it's uh, cleared up. We've had no precipitation, I'd say, after about 7.30. The one thing I will say, though, is that you've got two teams that want to go up-tempo. And it is definitely cooler right now than what it was. It would have been very difficult to maintain that pace, the kind of temperature we saw earlier. Matt Prater's going to kick off for the Denver Broncos. 
Seventh year on the Central Florida. And Jacoby Jones, one of the great postseason stars. Had a tremendous year. So many big plays. And, of course, the biggest of all on the way to the Lombardi Trophy was the touchdown here to send the divisional playoff game into overtime. So the 2013 NFL season is finally underway with a line drive kick that will wind up almost in the stands. And let's take a look now at the Ravens starting offense. Bill Flacco, Delaware. Ray Rice, New Rochelle High School. Vontae Lee, East Carolina. Torrey Smith, Maryland. Jacoby Jones, and Mighty Lane College. Ed Dixon, Oregon Ducks. Brian McKinney, for you. Colegio Assembly, Iowa State. Gino Gradkowski, Delaware. Marshall Yonda, Iowa. Michael Orr, University of Ole Miss. That offensive front really came together during the playoffs. And John Harbaugh said that made the difference. They start with the fullback Leach. They start with the running back Rice. And they start with play action. And they dump off to Ray Rice, who catches a ton of passes. Most of them around the line of scrimmage. And that time, Wesley Woodyard taking over as the middle linebacker for Denver makes the tackle. And Woodyard, a very athletic middle linebacker, had to go there because of an injury to Stuart Bradley. And he said the key for his game without question tonight is going to be can they stop Ray Rice running the ball, but maybe in particular when they dump it down to him. Ravens talking about going up tempo, going no huddle, but at least not at the outset today. With Denver, you'd very much expect that. I can tell you from experience, it's tough to do on the road. It's tough to get those signals out to the wideouts. Second down and 11. And slipping to the outside goes Rice to the 22-yard line. Duke Iannaccio making the tackle to safety coming up. Take a look at those numbers in postseason in those four games. And the new math would be 11 touchdowns, no interceptions, a 117 rating equals... 120 million dollars <laughs> which is the maximum that he can earn over the next six years in his new deal first time looking at the pass rush without von miller their top rusher right and doomerville of course plays with baltimore so it's third down and eight and the pass is swung out to stokely who played here last year and he gets taken down by chris harris there's a penalty on a play penalty downfield at the 41 yard line Walt coleman to make the first call of the year. Pass interference, number 12, offense. The the so the pass interference was downfield on Jones. Harris came up to make the tackle. So Baltimore begins with the three and out. Kobe Jones here is going to come right up the field and just run right through the defensive back, Chris Harris. And wouldn't have been a first down anyway. Trendon Holiday and Baltimore knows all too well how dangerous he is. At 5'5", the shortest player in the league, Sam Cook, to send it his way. And Holiday will let it bounce. The coverage was there, and it bounces out of bounds at the 22. And we're going to take a look at the Denver starters. Peyton Manning, University of Tennessee. No Sean Moreno, Georgia. Demarius Thomas, Georgia Tech. Eric Decker, Minnesota. Wes Welker, Texas Tech. Julius Thomas, Portland State University. Ron Clady, Boise State. Zane Beatles, Utah. Go Utes. Manny Ramirez, Texas Tech. Luis Vasquez, Texas Tech. Orlando Franklin, the U. By way of Toronto, Canada. Ramirez moves from guard to center, and then he's joined by Luis Vasquez, not only his teammate in college at Texas Tech, but his roommate in Lubbock as well. And we start with play action, and Manning over the middle, and the first pass of the season is incomplete. It's Julius Thomas, the tight end. He's won the starting job after being injured the past couple of years, and he gets popped by James ahead of all before he has possession. Joel Dreesen injured his knee, so the job comes to Julius Thomas, a former basketball player. Really high hopes for him, but he's only started four games as a pro, and couldn't hang on to that one. Going no huddle, they come up in the pistol this time with Manning fronting Moreno. And Moreno, who gets the start, it's going to be running back by committee this year, pushing and shoving going on here. Moreno, Ball, and Ronnie Hillman to share duties. Moreno is the most experienced and probably the best pass protector. 
Peyton with a tremendous year. Could have been the MVP except for a guy named Peterson who gained 2,097 yards. But he finished second. He's won it four times. Third down and eight. And they go four wide with the tight end here, but now they bring Moreno into the backfield. And Peyton to the outside, and it's caught. And that's Wes Welker making the catch. Knows exactly where he has to go for the first down. Reaches for it and appears to have it. Well, this is one of those world-famous option routes by Wes Welker. Depending on what the coverage is, he can go in, he can go out, he can go deep. That time, Corey Graham tried to take away the inside. He broke to the outside. And they're hot already. A penny for Tom Brady's thoughts at the moment. Yeah. From the 34-yard line after the first first down of the game. Again, Manning off play action, throwing into traffic and incomplete, intended for Decker, and that's Webb covering. Let's take a look at the Ravens starters. Oregon. Chris Canty, Wahoo Wah. Elvis Dumerville, Louisville. Daryl Smith, Georgia Tech. Josh Bynes, Auburn. Hacksaw, Ball So Hard University. Jimmy Smith, Colton High School. Corey Graham, University of New Hampshire. James Yedro, University of Massachusetts. Michael Huff, Texas. Ladarius Webb, Nickel State. A lot of changes on that defense as Moreno takes it to the 41. Of course, the key guys that are missing would be Ray Lewis, who retired. Ed Reed wound up going to Houston. They'd be the headliners, but there are others as well. And don't be surprised if you see the Broncos running right tonight. Pick up Luis Vasquez from San Diego. Orlando Franklin, a big guy in the center. Manny Ramirez, a new guy that they feel really good about running behind. Third and three. From the 41-yard line on Denver's opening drive. With protection, and then the pass is incomplete. The crowd looks around for a flag, but there's none forthcoming. Jimmy Smith was there with the coverage. It was Smith who was covering Crabtree in the end zone at the Super Bowl. who could have won the game for San Francisco. That time the pass intended for Thomas. The crowd barks at the replay. Fourth down. Well, you have to give the guys a chance to play defense. Let's see, any contact, maybe a little bit on that left shoulder. A lot of times the officials, if they don't see him pulling back on that, they'll let that go, and they did there. Britton Colquitt is the Denver punter. It's a cushy job when you get the kick at altitude. Your stats look great. And they paid Manning's recorder, man. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a shorter kick. It's called a, for a fair catch by Jacoby Jones, but then Denver can't get down there, and it rolls about 15 yards into the end zone for the touchback. 11 9 to go in the opening quarter. No score. And this kickoff special being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. You can find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Nissan, innovation for today, innovation for tomorrow, innovation that excites. By Verizon, never be without football with NFL Mobile. And by Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. You know what that is. That's the celebration in Baltimore on the 5th of February, a couple of days after the Super Bowl win. Steve Bashotti became a partner of Art Modell a number of years ago and took over the team last year, dedicated to Art, who died at the beginning of the season. The owner of the Ravens looking on as Bernard Pierce, who backs up Rice but gets to see a lot of playing time, takes it out to the 34, a 14-yard gain, and a Raven first down. Well, they bring back Vontae Leach, their fullback, and it already pays dividends. He's the lead blocker. This is a very traditional offense in many ways. Still fullback, tailback, and two wide receivers, and they make it work because of Vontae Leach. From the 34, Pierce flanking Flacco. And a quick pass over the middle is incomplete, intended for Smith. And let's take a look at the Bronco defense. Derek Wolf, Cincinnati. Kevin Vickerson, Michigan State, Spartan Dogs. Terrence Knighton, Temple Owls. Raw Bears, the University of Tennessee. Nate Irvin, North Carolina State. Wesley Woodyard, Kentucky. Danny Trevathan, Kentucky. Chris Harris, Kansas University. Doogie Inacho, San Jose State. Raheem the Dream Moore, UCLA. Dominique Roger Cromartie, Tennessee State. Cromartie, one of the new defenders, former 
Arizona Cardinal and Philadelphia Eagle as Leach gets taken down. Now, a couple of the guys are missing. Of course, there is Champ Bailey suffered a foot injury in the preseason game in Seattle two and a half weeks ago. They hope to have him back in a week and a half when they play their second game. And Vaughn Miller is suspended for the first six games, violating the substance abuse policy. So Vaughn Miller is a guy who is a sack meister, 18 and a half. Of course, Doomerville now with Baltimore. Bailey gone, so a lot of mix and match for Jack Del Rio's unit. Third and six. What's coming? Flacco hangs in, guns one on the money. Caught by Torrey Smith, had a breakout year last year. Tackled there by Chris Harris. Big gain on a third and six. Gain of 29. Well, one of the problems the Broncos without Von Miller are going to have to try to manufacture a pass rush. That time they brought five, but that also means man coverage on the back end and trying to cover Torrey Smith one-on-one, -on -one, very difficult. That's as close as they've gotten to Joe, Joe Flacco all night. Ayers making contact with him as he releases the ball at the 33. Here goes Rice through the middle to the 26. Ray Rice about as valuable as, as any back in the league. He's a three down back. He's a great runner. He catches a ton of passes since he came into the league in 2008. No running back has caught more passes. He does everything. Yeah, his numbers actually were down just a bit last year, but that was very much a positive. Bernard Pierce able to share the load, averaging almost five yards per carry, but both of those guys were fresh and played great in the playoffs. Ravens opening the season with only two pure running backs. Two running backs and two fullbacks. Second down and three. This time Rice flanks wide left. And now comes in motion to the backfield. They flare him out. Back and looking the other way. Brought by Jones to the 14-yard line. This crowd has already seen enough of Jacoby Jones. Well, and I think that the story of the game quickly has already become the lack of a pass rush. This is a good offensive line up front when they brought in Bryant McKinney a season ago for the playoffs. The offense took off, but you can see Joe Flacco has all day, and you are not going to beat this team unless you can get after him a bit. Raven started this drive at their own 20-yard line. Eight minutes to go in the quarter. Back to the ground, but not much happening right there as Pierce gets taken down. Iannaccio comes up to make the tackle, and it'll be second down and ten. Duke Iannaccio, who is a surprise starter. He beat out Mike Adams. He's a guy that sort of learned the system a year ago, and they threw the competition open, and Iannaccio came out with a job, and you can see partly why. Halfway mark of the opening quarter. Blacko turns it back the other way. Very dangerous with two Broncos right there. Intended for Dallas Clark, the former Cole who played, of course, so many years with Manning. Picked up here. Woodyard and Iannaccio are both there as Flacco goes back the other way and almost pays for it. A huge mistake by Joe Flacco. His streak of good luck continues because this one could have easily been picked off and taking the distance the other way. He just got a break for that mistake. Third and ten. Quick flip to the outside to Smith. And Smith fighting for the first down. And they're going to spot it just about at the first down marker. And indeed, when the ball is placed down, it is a first down. Tony Carter couldn't drag him down in time to stop him. First down. Well, Torrey Smith manages to extend this ball. Tough lifting. Let's see. Boy, that is tough. At what angle did that ball go across that line? That's flip a coin time. And you can't have a bigger moment to start this game for the uh, Baltimore Ravens. Ball just outside the two. You've got Leach at fullback. Rice is the running back. Billy Badgemer, the tight end in motion, and the pass is caught. And this is Leach trying to get in, and he's in for the touchdown. Covered by the linebacker, Wesley Woodyard. Vontae Leach, the very valuable fullback. Not that many teams, of course, still use fullbacks, but they get the most out of him, and he scores the first touchdown 
of 2013. Well, again, that's the versatility of Vontae Leach. We saw him lead block earlier, makes the catch, drives it into the end zone. Dallas Clark was wide open as well in the back of the end zone. This is a much tougher throw, but managed to get it in. Very impressive drive, beating the Broncos basically with their own medicine. A little hurry-up offense right down the field. Justin Tucker coming off a brilliant rookie season, second-year kicker out of Texas. Of course, they're looking upstairs. All scoring plays have to be reviewed and confirmed, and it is. And so now Tucker for the extra point. So the Baltimore Ravens take the ball at their own 20. It takes them a little less than four minutes. It took them 10 plays, three runs, seven rushes, and they draw first blood. 7-0 world champs. For the complete viewing experience, check out NBC Sports Live Extra, NBCSports.com, Michelle Tafoya, social media reports, live chat with Mike Florio. A lot of good stuff right there. And tonight, uh, Matt Burke will check in on uh, social media as well. Matt with a great career in Minnesota and Baltimore. And he retired with his Super Bowl ring. And his replacement right there in the middle of the line is Gino Gratkowski. In the second year out of Delaware, the school that produced one Joe Flacco and the kick by Tucker through the end zone and Peyton Manning will take over at the 20. So Baltimore goes 80 yards and leaves 7-7. Ravens caught a bit of a break to start that drive. Jacoby Jones as he was coming up for the fair catch makes the fair catch signal. Now you cannot block at this point. He does block Caldwell, pulls back. They decide not to call it. Drive starts on the 20 instead of about the 11. Mm -hmm. Maybe feeling it was incidental contact. Regardless, a heck of a drive by the Ravens. 80 yards, 10 plays. The running back is Moreno. The fake to him, and then the pass is caught by Welker. So he has caught both of Manning's completions tonight. John Fox, after nine years in Carolina, one Super Bowl appearance. He was not a work long hired by John Elway. Came here. That's the year, of course, Tim Tebow had all the magic at the end. They beat Pittsburgh. You had Tebow mania. And Elway goes out and he signs Manning and he takes him to that 13-3 mark last season. He goes Moreno again, who was benched for a good part of last year, then came on when the day he got hurt and played well down the stretch. It'll be third down and three. And no Sean Moreno really getting a bit of a start from John Fox because of the fact that he knows the offense so well. Monte Ball, probably a little bit better runner, a rookie, high draft pick. Ronnie Hillman, an explosive player, but they trust Moreno more, so he's playing. This time they go five wide with trips. They bunch him to the right side of the formation on third down and three. And Manning with a survey and Gundo in the middle for a first down to the 41. That's Wes Welker already starting to pay dividends. So Manning has started three out of six and all three to Wes. They are happy to have Ryan Clady back from his shoulder surgery. He's got his hands full tonight against Terrell Suggs. Suggs telling us that Clady is one of a very small handful of tackles in this game that he puts at the very top of the list. Drafted number one out of Boise State in 2008 is Clady. And that pass is caught on the run by Welker across the 50 to the Raven 45 yard line. Just one on one across the field, and he's working against Corey Graham, a guy that he saw when he was playing in New England. And so far, Wes Welker. Getting the better of that one. This time Suggs getting the better of Clady, but just a fraction of a second late. Suggs had a couple of sacks of Peyton Manning in that playoff game last year. Now Ronnie Hillman comes in as the running back. Rookie out of San Diego State, picked in the third round, and he makes his regular season debut by getting one over the left side. And that's Elvis Doomerville in his eighth year out of Louisville. The first seven were spent here. Contract snafu. I mean, that's that's the definition of snafu. His picture is next to it in the dictionary. Yeah, and he's not happy about it either. He really did not want to leave. Of course, he was scheduled to make about $14 million, something like that. And then they had it reduced down to about eight. The facts never got in, and he's in Baltimore. Second down and nine. And that's caught at the 40 yard line by Decker. It was deflected. Corey Graham came in and deflected it. And it'll be third down and four. 
Well, we're starting to see the entire package defensively now for the Ravens as well. Dean Pease, the defensive coordinator who did such a terrific job last year during the course of that playoff run so many years in New England. And so he's had plenty of great battles over the years with Peyton Manning. So do you know him? He said nobody knows Peyton Manning. That guy is something special. Moreno in the backfield, third down and four. Dancing around throws and that's incomplete. Crowd looks for a flag, doesn't get it. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver, so the drive bogs down. It'll be fourth down. Let me just correct something on Ronnie Hillman, second year player. I think he said he was a rookie. Picked last year and uh, actually performed pretty well in the playoffs. There's Ladarius Webb. Boy, are they happy to have him back. $50 million cornerback out for the season about halfway through last year. But now they have legitimate cover guys across the board. They are able to bring pressure if they wish because they have guys that can play man-to-man -man so far on everybody except Wes Walker. Cole <laughs> <laughs> an end over end kick. Another fair catch is cool for him this time made by Lordarius Webb. 3.39 to go in the quarter. It's 7 to nothing. Baltimore. They have the ball. Just a few days away from the premiere of the Million Second Quiz. The biggest prize in game show history. Million Second Quiz. Hosted by Ryan Seacrest. You'll see it Monday. 8 Eastern and Pacific, 7 Central Mountain. It's right here on NBC. Pedaling down the 16th Street Mall in Denver. Back we come to Sports Authority Field. Ravens begin this drive from the 10-yard line on first down. Blacker rolling away from pressure, nobody home. So he throws it way out of bounds. Danny Trevathan put the pressure on it to be second down at 10. A little pressure there, which is good. This offensive line of the Ravens was completely remade for the playoffs a season ago. They bring in Bryant McKinney, who did not start a game the entire year. What a difference he made in protection. But the, maybe the biggest thing is it took Coleccio Simile down to guard really solidified the pocket inside and of course this year Gino Gradkowski in at center for Matt Burke the guy with not the experience but maybe a little more quickness than what Burke had three and a half to go in the first quarter Weiss good run to the 18 yard line a couple of shy of the first down it'll be third and a deuce Moore made the tackle a little trap from Marshall Yonda here coming across Throwing something back that Peyton Manning likes as well. It's such a great play because you actually use the defensive line's momentum against them. They want to get up the field that time, Terrence Knighton. So it was an easy kick out trap block for Marshall Yonda. This place has bounce in it, much like the other mile high. What a foot stamping going on, third down and two. And it's a first down on the outside, a run spinning away, takes the ball out to the 26-yard line, spun around Danny Trevathan, and that'll move the chains. Trevathan's a tremendous cover guy, but this is tough. Ray Rice goes in motion and basically sees the man coverage coming out, and then he stacks in behind the other receiver. So you really almost have no chance whatsoever to get a clean look at Rice, and they convert the first down. Rice out, Pearson. Here's Pierce, nothing happening, no hole opens right there. And it'll be second down. A shocking move was made by the Ravens toward the end of last season. Cam Cameron had been the offensive coordinator, but they made the change in December, brought Jim Caldwell in, who had been the quarterback's coach. He had been the head coach at Indianapolis, took them to a Super Bowl, the successor to Tony Dungy, and John Harbaugh said it. We just had to make the move, and Paul and Flacco very much, very much on the same page. It stunned Caldwell. He didn't know it was coming at all, and he said an hour and a half later, there I am standing in front of the team. It was shocking to everybody. Second and 11, and Flacco throws, and that's caught up the seam by Jacoby Jones to the 39-yard line. He's tackled there by Chris Harris with a minute and a half to play in the quarter. Chris Harris really without any help inside kind of takes an outside edge that time against Jacoby Jones. Ordinarily, if a defensive back plays outside like that, you expect a linebacker or a safety to drop down in the middle. 
none there. And Jacoby took advantage. Clock on nine for his first 12. 84 yards and the touchdown. To the outside, they set up the bubble screen with Rice, but that's broken up by Woodyard, who's really coming into his own. Started as a special teams guy, sixth year out of Kentucky, and he is the man in the middle in the signal caller. Yeah, and I tell you, if you talked with Jack Del Rio, their defensive coordinator, he will tell you that after the New England game, they had so many things go wrong in that game with communication. He made the switch. He brought Wesley Woodyard in to lead the huddle, to make the calls. He said that's when our defense really took off a season ago. On second and ten, a little fake toss, and then a screen to the left side, but nothing happening there. Jacoby Jones. Duke Iannaccio comes up to make the tackle, and that will take us down to the end of a first quarter that was delayed by weather for 33 minutes. One quarter of the first game of the season in the books. Baltimore 7, Denver nothing. This NFL kickoff special on NBC continues after these messages. Tonight's aerial coverage being brought to you by Geico. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle DeFoyer, Denver start the second quarter on opening night. It's third down and 12 for the Baltimore Ravens who lead 7 to nothing. And with a flag thrown, that ends the play. And a false start here. Walt Coleman coming in. False start, number 82, offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Corey Smith will make it third down and 17. John Harbaugh hands on news. Yeah, I didn't like that one too much. But, you know, they really are looking for who the go-to guy is going to be on this offense. The last couple of years, it's been either Dennis Pitta, who's out with a fractured hip, or Antoine Bolden, who's playing for the 49ers right now. So they're looking for that next guy to step up. Maybe it's Stokely, maybe it's Rice, maybe it's Vontae Leach. Denver with their gone defense, six defensive backs, and the pass is incomplete. Intended for Ed Dixon, Mike Adams got there as the ball got there. So Dixon, who will see most of the action until Pitta, if and when he recovers this season, can't haul it in, fourth down. Well, what a nice play by Mike Adams, times this thing up perfectly, and that's the second time we've seen a perfectly thrown ball to a tight end get knocked away of course Adams trying to stay away from the headgear because as we well know it's a penalty these days Sam Cook will try to kick it away from Trendon Holiday if he can and instead here's Holiday at the 25 the ever dangerous one but this time only a four yard run back taken out at the 29 by Matt Elam on draft choice seven nothing Wes Walker coming over he's already caught Four of Manning's five completions tonight. 07 through 12 with the Patriots, highest in NFL history, 672 catches over a six year span. And he loves to work. He's 5'9 and 185, but he works the inside like few others. 366 between the numbers. Yeah, Peyton Manning telling us, he said, from the first minute I met him, he was who I thought he was. He's a gym rat. He loves to work, and when I started throwing passes to him, he said, I knew it was going to work. As Dennis Green might have put it, you know, time to go. <laughs> First down, Roshan Moreno takes the ball up to the 33-yard line. Of course, when Walker, sooner or later, he'll catch a touchdown pass from Manning, and then he can say he's the only guy in history to catch it from Brady and Manning. You know, and it's always a tough decision because you're talking about what will a guy do not what did he do when you're trying to sign him to a contract and yet when you're talking about Wes Welker he probably has two three good years left in him to go inside with Peyton Manning and what he's going to do here's Moreno well, remember last year in New England there was some talk around the Patriots that Belichick wasn't happy with Welker it was disputed I mean he did catch 118 passes but by the time the season ended and it came time to get a new contract he's here Belichick likes guys who help him win championships, and that guy has about as much heart as anybody you'll see. I, I tell you, I don't think I've ever seen a better effort guy than Wes Walker. I never see him take a minute of a playoff ever. Third down and seven. Hurry, hurry! Stepping 
enough to avoid the pressure, but the pass a little too high. But the flag is strong. Welker asking for it. Covered there by Corey Graham, who had the two picks of Manning in the playoff game Prior last year. the pass, illegal contact, 24, defense, five-yard penalty, automatic first down. So before the pass was thrown, automatic first down. Corey Graham got him at about seven, eight yards from the line of scrimmage. There he is on that line. Once he crosses the other line, you cannot make that kind of contact again. So not pass interference, illegal contact. Remember this game last year and opener and Peyton kind of off to a little bit of a slow start and then all of a sudden bang, 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 really started going late in that one. The ebb and flow of that game was incredible on both sides. And now his pass is incomplete. That time intended for Eric Decker. Darrell Smith is there. With Ray Lewis retiring, who is going to fill that void? Well, Darrell Smith had played in relative anonymity with Jacksonville because Jacksonville just hasn't been very good for a number of years, but he did a real good job there. And uh, the Ravens had their eye on him for months. And this is Julius Thomas making the catch. And then they had to wait until June because of money situations, the salary cap and all of the rest, to wind up signing him. Yeah, they, uh, they had a feeling about him, though, because they didn't want to lose the compensatory pick, so they waited. And they have been pleasantly surprised. He has fit in perfectly and just filled that leadership void. Not going to be Ray Lewis, but he was exactly what they needed on this defense. Third and four over the middle and the pass at the 48-yard line. That's Darrell Smith. So we talk about it, but it's incomplete. The ball winds up on the ground. A near pick there. Julius Thomas is at the, the bottom of the pile as well, and it's fourth down. Tries to hit Eric Decker coming across the field and really just threw it behind him. Looks like the ball bounces. Comes out. Yep. Yeah, no question about it. It's called by the officials, so now both quarterbacks have caught a break on poorly thrown balls. Cole quick to punt. Jacoby Jones back to receive. You got two phenomenal return men in the game, Jones and Holiday. Both were cast away by the Houston Texans. A high, very short kick. And running in with a fair catch, the ball will bounce and be down at the one yard line. Wow, what a collision. Woo. Jones. Jacoby Jones took from his own guy on the play. Brendan Trowick, a rookie free agent out of Troy. That's his welcome to the NFL moment. One he'd love to forget immediately. A lot of things to talk about here, but the ball's going to come off the goal line. David Bruton, their special team star, comes down. And you'll see the official throw the beanbag, the collision, of course, newsworthy enough. They hit David Bruton, so that's where they're going to mark it at the 15. And the bigger story, though, is this, with Jacoby Jones hyperextending that knee. Certainly hope he's okay. The rookie Triac runs into him. So Marlon Brown, a rookie out of Georgia, will have to take that spot on the outside. Opposite Torrey Smith and Ray Rice picks up one yard. So of all things, Jones calling for the fair catch. The rookie free agent backing up Trowick. Running into Jones, Trowick hurt as well. There is, there he is on the bench, and Bruton just barely got a piece of it. Otherwise, the ball would have been at the one-yard line. Second and nine now. Rice dancing. Another yard. Kevin Dickerson is there. Tackle 99. It'll be third down and eight. So now no Anquan Bolden, you make that decision. And here's your young man, Marlon Brown, had a chance to watch him in preseason. He went to the University of Georgia, got hurt late in the year, but he put on a show against the Carolina Panthers. He had a tremendous game, but you can see the eyes a little big right now. This is a heck of a moment for the rookie. Huge target, 6'5", and 2.05. Third and eight out of the gun. Blacko fires over the middle, and it's picked off Chris Harris at the 24-yard line. Intended for Brandon Stokely and Harris stepping in for the pick to give the Broncos great position. 
Chris Harris was the last person to intercept Joe Flacco. Of course, the tremendous run inside. Here we go. He's going to undercut this route. And so the thin receiving core, we see it already. No Jacoby Jones. You get a little braver against the set 37-year-old Brandon Stokely. And Chris Harris gets him again. Picked him off and ran it back 98 yards in Baltimore in week 15 last year. From the 24-yard line, we'll start with Moreno in the backfield, but first, Walt Coleman will tell us, eventually. Crowd is still upset about the call on the, the punt, even though you could see it on the replay, that the ball did deflect off Bruton's arm. You know, and Peyton Manning doesn't like this. As an offense, when you get a quick change like that, you get a turnover, especially down in this part of the field, you want to run out there, snap the ball, the defense is unsettled, and they gave the Ravens a bit of a moment there to regroup. Peyton wearing a glove now. He did not start the game with a glove. Hurry, hurry! <laughs> with the weather, of course, it's not 13. It was 86 at kickoff. And Manning with the wide open to Julius Thomas for the touchdown. Chris Canty knocks Manning down after he releases the pass. It's the glove. <laughs> One of the things that they were going to try to do was fake the Baltimore Ravens. Three different guys on that team that knew Peyton Manning's calls. They were going to make some calls that the Ravens would recognize and then change it up off of there. I'm sure the call that Stokely and some of the guys knew was a flat route there. They go flat, they go up, and that is Peyton Manning simply fooling the Baltimore Ravens, using their knowledge against them. One play following the pick. Trader for the point after. Ooh, close. But just good inside the right upright to tie the game. 11.35 left in the opening half. 7-7 on opening night. All right, coming to NBC, James Spader will start a new drama. It's called The Blacklist, and it debuts in a couple of weeks. Monday night, September the 23rd, right here on NBC. 33-minute weather delay before the start of the game. Manning comes out to the 24-yard line after the pick. Suggs, who normally invites a lot of attention, says, get away from me. To our cameraman. And we've got a touchback. Don't forget, Dallas Clark, Jim Caldwell, Brandon Stokely, all guys with experience. Watch Peyton with the audible now. We'll move his back over here, and they think that this is coming. So instead, Peyton Manning's going to give them that because the code, the signal, the hand signal, whatever it was, meant flat. He worked against their knowledge and scored a touchdown. Pretty creative stuff. And Thomas has won the job as you look at Stokely with the Broncos last year and was a longtime teammate of Peyton in Indianapolis and was with the Ravens originally back in 2000 when they won their first Super Bowl. They start with Pierce. Sean Phillips makes the tackle, loss of two. Here's Michelle. Well, Jacoby Jones has a right knee sprain, Al. He went back to the locker room for further evaluation. Ravens team doctor Leanne Curl looked at that knee very quickly for the stability of it, and it was very quick she made the decision to take him back to the locker room. He walked back very slowly and very gingerly, Al. Thank you, Michelle, on a bizarre play. The only good thing for him would be at least he's got a few extra days before they have to play again a week from Sunday in rehab. A slack on a reverse roll wide open, but misses the target. Ed Dixon incomplete. Third and 12. You know, we're starting to see a little bit of the thin nature of this receiving core. Uh, Dennis Pitta, the go-to guy, not there. Ed Dixon coming across and trying to get the connection. But so far, especially now without Jacoby Jones, just a little uncomfortable. You can see this Ravens team now. Just a bit unsettled with their passing game. And third and 12. 
Out to the left side. It's Dallas Clark making the catch. And Dallas Clark turning what for just a second might have looked like a Denver interception and possible touchdown return into a big first down. Gain of 31. That was Robert Ayers out on the coverage of Dallas Clark, the defensive end. He goes for the interception, just misses. And in man coverage, you can see everybody just chasing their receiver down the field. Huge break there for the Ravens. First down at the 49-yard line. Pierce takes it right to the midfield stripe as we tick down the 10 minutes to go in the first half. Raven receiving leaders last year. Bolden traded to San Francisco. Pitt is on IR. They hope to have back. He's on that short-term IR where they could get him back before the end of the season. Rice, and then you got Smith and Jones. So three of those guys, not here. I tell you, he's doing a nice job so far. Dominic Rogers promoting on Torrey Smith. Torrey Smith tore up Champ Bailey last year in the playoff game. Bailey inactive tonight. And Flacco's going to bomb one that's incomplete. He is like the reincarnation of Daryl Lamonica, the mad bomber, because it's funny you think about when Flacco came into the league and everybody said, well, he's a game manager. It's all about the ball and more defense. Meanwhile, there are two flags down on the play. He's not a game manager. He's a rocket launcher. Right. And the Broncos found out about that last year. Two more very deep passes than anybody in the Brian league pass, last year. Holding, 33, defense, five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's Duke Iannaccio, the second-year safety at of San Jose State, who's won the starting job back there. Pretty simple call here. Duke Iannaccio right there. Going to be working against Torrey Smith and just hooks him from the outside. There were flags that came from everywhere. Five-yard penalty. But that automatic first down takes the steam out of this crowd. Rice back in on first down. And Leach the fullback. Flag before the snap. Full start. Full start, number 72. Offense. Five yard penalty. Field first down. Left guard Osemele. I'll tell you, the Baltimore Ravens have two of the nastier guards you'll find playing. Marshall Yonda has an intimidation factor to him, the right guard, number 73, and Coleccio Simile is at home playing left guard, moved in from tackle and clearly made a difference. Joe Flacco said it was at least a half a second difference when I was throwing the football when he was playing guard. First and 15, they run a stunt up front, but they get off the pass to Rice, and Rice takes it to the 40-yard line. Yeah, Derek Wolf slicing in, almost busting up the play, but instead you have a gain of 10, second and five. Just good to see Derek Wolf back out on the field again. There's a young man that they carted off, strapped to a stretcher, had a spinal concussion, said the entire right side of his body had no feeling. He obviously was absolutely scared to death. Caught a break. And it's like turning the lights off in a factory. They go off fast, come on slowly. Eventually they came off back on, and there he is. Sort of like a concussion in the spine. Very scary in a preseason game in Seattle. August 17th as Ray Rice gets tackled. At just about the line of scrimmage, it'll be third down and five with 8.45 left in the half. The one thing about the Denver Broncos is they are better up front. You can see it already. Terrence Knight has made a difference. Kevin Vickerson, draft Sylvester Williams. This is a better bunch protecting those inside linebackers with their defensive tackles. Five receivers all going out, and Flacco's going to go deep and incomplete. Carter is back there, intended for the rookie Marlon Brown, fourth down. Well, here's where you have to win. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. You get man coverage, and that means one-on-one -on -one with no help whatsoever. The rookie Marlon Brown with the chance. But Tony Carter, Chris Harris, Dominic Rogers, Cromarty, they've been up to the task at least thus far. Well, Wes Welker is going to return the kick. They send him back inside the 10-yard line if indeed Sam Cook puts it in play. Welcome to the for a fair catch. 
and make it and then drop the ball of all guys and the Ravens think they have it and they do so of all things you're going to send a guy back there with sure hands oh, on a fair goodness. catch situation which that's what he was he figured to do did cook and then Welsh Welker coughs it up well a cardinal sin to begin with he's on the 10 and he backs up to his own five yard line there's no reason to catch that ball at all Ravens had him surrounded and oh what a turn of events in this one it is Shockey Brown who comes in and will recover the ball inside the two-yard line. Oof. That's tough when you're the new guy in town and you plant one on the one-yard line for this offense and that fullback and that tailback. Good luck now. Well, it's interesting. Trendon Holiday is their regular return guy. He's had fumbling issues through his career. They put Welker back there for his hands, and look what happens. First down and goal inside the two. Rice swinging to the outside. Leach throws the block, and that springs Rice for a touchdown. Leach takes the Anacho out of the play, and Ray Rice puts it into the end zone. Well, Vontae Leach, another knockout blow there and Michael Orr the right tackle gets up slowly there we go coming right at you Duke Nacho takes a shot and is out of it maybe look Ray Rice with a little jump rope there for the touchdown boy what a huge penalty huh mm. I mean uh turnover oh yeah well each team with a turnover and each has resulted in a next play touchdown by the opposition and now Justin Tucker to make it a seven point game eight minutes and three seconds remaining in the opening half on opening night Ravens by seven in ten. This NBC kickoff special being brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. By Wendy's, by Rush from the director Ron Howard in theaters September the 27th. And by Toyota. The Denver Mint, world's largest producer of coins, been in operation here since 1906. World famous Denver Mint. Or got shaken up on the touchdown. The right tackle for Baltimore. Friendly fire again. It's killing the Ravens. Marshall Yonda, his own teammate, got him the same way that Brendan Troutwick got Jacoby Jones. And now Tucker to kick off. Holiday is back there. Not much opportunities to return kickoffs at 5,280 feet. Let's see if we can see it right here. Marshall Yonda is going to come right into his knee. And down he goes. Monte Leach, though, doing just a tremendous job. If you're going to pick an early MVP in this one, it may well be Vontae Leach. He's been outstanding. Manning starts his drive from the 20-yard line. Moreno is the back. Manning off play action. And complete for a gain of 12. Denarius Thomas makes the catch. Go to Michelle. Well, the word on Michael Orr is that it is a right ankle sprain, and he is questionable to return, Al. He's up and trying to put some weight on it without a shoe on right now. Doctors have been looking at him. Even John Harbaugh came over and asked him how he's doing, but mm. right now questionable. Very interesting, Michelle, too. It will be Ricky Wagner who comes in as a rookie. Omaha. We'll see when they get the ball. First and 10 from the 33. Give the ball to mm. Moreno, and he gets whacked after a gain of two by Halote Mata, who says hello. Now, one problem you've got if you try and take an outside stretch play and cut it back. You're going to run into that guy right there. Hello to Nada has that hello to right there to no Sean Marino. He is a man's man, that guy inside. 6'4 and 340. 
Maybe Vince Wolfork, the only other guy I can think of, that kind of presence in there. Second down and eight. Nine the time. Dumps it off underneath. Catch is made by Moreno. Out to the 41-yard line, setting up a third and two. Smith makes the tackle. Seven minutes to play in the half. Well, we talked about uh, the new right guard, Luis Vasquez. Here we go, coming over from San Diego. He's got his hands full with Lodi Nada, but handles that perfectly. Nice to have that big presence. When you have guys inside that can hold the point, it gives Peyton Manning a chance to step up and make bigger throws. Third and two. Raven shuffling around on defense. And the first down is gained by Moreno. Ravens moving around all over the place, and Moreno just did get enough over the left side first down. Well, here's what happens. They want Terrell Suggs always on the weak side of the formation. So they're trying to flip him to get him over to that left side. He gets there late. They go right at him. But Suggs showing up late. You can see <laughs> when you don't get your feet set against Ryan Clady, you go backwards. Well, they're going to measure. They don't give him the greatest of spots. Put it right there. And just enough. Think, this, think Suggs has introduced himself uh, in, in our games how many different ways through the years? Oh my gosh, he has some fun with that, doesn't he? He loves it. He, he's a great energy guy. And now with Ray Lewis not being on the field, he doesn't want to talk about his leadership role, but there's no question. He's the energy. He's the juice in practice. He's the guy they're turning to right now. Now you've got Monte Ball as the running back, the rookie out of Wisconsin. The play fake to him. And the man is going to go deep down the right side and his contact all over the place. And a flag is thrown. Eric Decker and Corey Graham got tangled up and they're going to call it offensive. Offensive pass interference. Pass interference, number 87, offense, 10-yard penalty. Well, Decker saw the ball was thrown behind him here, and he's going to try and gain position, just sort of did a little arm over. I think he did hook him around the waist. You could see him kind of brace himself there, push Corey Graham by, and got caught. Ten-yard penalty back to the 33-yard line, first down and 20. Manning now in the pistol. Protection is good. Pass to the outside is good as well. Julius Thomas has scored the touchdown. Breaking the tackle. And Julius Thomas all the way inside the 25-yard line. He broke away from the safety, Michael Huff. Michael Huff trying to replace Ed Reed. This is heavy lifting, though, for any safety. This guy is a monster. You go out and you watch him in practice, and you go, who is that? Julius Thomas had really not played very much at all, was hurt, got an opportunity because of the injuries to Joel Dreesen and Jacob Tammy, and he is having a big, big night so far. Former basketball star at Portland State. Again, Manning off the play, they throws him over the middle, it is Thomas, the man of the hour. Two touchdowns for Thomas. This one coming after a 44-yard pass. This good for 23. And John Elway said, lose that was good. Watch the delay here. He's working against Michael Huff. Kind of does a little stutter step. Goes right by him and drives it into the end zone. Here's Elvis Doomerville on the inside. May have gotten held just a bit. But the play action, the play action has really made a difference for Peyton Manning. They found in the offseason as they studied it, it slows that pass rush down just a fraction of a second, enough time for another touchdown. Great for the point after. He averaged almost four yards per pass more with play action last year than without. We asked him about it the other day. He said, it gives me more protection. Indeed it does. Game is tied. Not too late to play NFL.com Fantasy Football. Sign up in under two minutes and play for free at NFL.com slash fantasy. If you have Julius Thomas in your fantasy league, you're leading the league. And you're a genius. 
You know, we watched him at practice the other day, and I don't think Peyton Manning could hit him once. He tried several times. It just didn't work out. And tonight, all magic. Greater to kick off. And they've got Bernard Pierce now with Jones first. And he won't have a chance to run it back. Joe Flacco. In his sixth year in the league, the first five seasons, of course, Baltimore defensively dominant. But he started as a rookie in his first year when Harbaugh got the job there. He and Manning both started in their rookie seasons. Nine postseason wins, tied for most in the first five seasons in NFL history with Tom Brady. And he's won a postseason game in each of his first five seasons. He's won nine total. We mentioned Ricky Wagner. He is the rookie out of Wisconsin right tackle with Michael Orr out of the game. And Flacco's going to get sacked on the first play by Robert Ayers who nearly had an interception the last time Baltimore had the ball and this time gets the big sack here and there's Orr on the bench well one of the problems Joe Flacco drifts here pressure's going to come but Flacco's going to come this way really had him pushed by the pocket and so I'm sure that Brian McKinney's saying what the heck I did a great job on my block looking over that way it was really a coverage sack as much as anything but I know Robert Ayers is thrilled. A lot of pressure on him now with Von Miller out. Second and 19. They got to keep it on the ground here. Trying to pick up a little yardage with Bernard Pierce out to the 16. So the Baltimore Ravens right now without Jacoby Jones, without Orr, they're starting right tackle. And of course, we've chronicled the fact Bolden's gone, hit his hurt. Different story. 439 now and you're going to give Peyton Manning the ball back a great field position if you don't come up with a big one here third and 14 Franco stepping away and the pass is incomplete intended for Brandon Stokely so a very fast three and out punctuated by a sack Chris Harris covers, and Manning will get the ball back with over four minutes. Slot blitz going to come off the edge here. Made him get the ball out just a little bit quicker. Pretty good job, though, by Rick Wagner noticing that coming out late, giving him just enough time. So now you've got Trendon Holiday, their regular returner after the disastrous punt return for Welker on the last series. And Sam Cook sends it up into the night sky. A flag is thrown. Holiday at the 34. Oh, it's run. He runs out of room, and then of all things, a real dumb personal foul. Albert McClellan. So you had a flag at the outset back at the eight-yard line, and you know what that flag is going to be for McClellan. And we'll get the call from Coleman. Last thing in the world you want to do is, oh, there's the official with the hat off. Somebody's running out of bounds or doing something wrong there. That you tack on 15 yards to this one across midfield well we know what the second flag is for what's the first there are two fouls on the kicking team holding number 32 that penalty's declined personal foul and that's their roughness number 50 kicking team that penalty will be assessed 15 yards from the end of the play first down so ahead of all holds, he holds, and then we saw what McClellan did. There we go. Ahead of Bo right there is gonna hold David Bruton or tackle him or maul him or assault him or something. And then the same thing happened down the field. Trendon Holiday only weighs about 150 pounds. Sprint champion in college, won the NCAA 100 meter dash, but He's not a big guy. Look at that. The Ravens, of all things, winning the Super Bowl, had the most penalty yardage in the league last year. Second highest total of penalties. You know, they list Holiday at, uh, at 170. <laughs> not really. He's the shortest guy in the league, and there are a couple other guys around the league that are also listed at a buck 70. From the 49. Manning throws, and the pass is taken just off 
the surface. Terrell Suggs came in and hit Manning, but the pass is caught for a short gain by Thomas. I thought it hit the ground looking from here. Manning wants to get up there in a hurry. Let's take a look here. He got a good shot from Suggs on the tail end of that one. Looked like a little bit of the point. They're going to let it go, though. No, that was a one hopper for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you got to, that's a uh, challengeable call. And thus it will be challenged. How's that for deductive reasoning? <laughs> I like your eyesight, though. <laughs> Saw that one. That's way yeah. across the field from us. So, so Harbaugh not Moore just arguing that one. Really on the field of a completed catch. Right, so if, if Harbaugh wins the challenge, it'll be second down and 10. And we'll be back right after this. Harbaugh wins about half of his challenges, and that's about the league average as well. And I think he's going to win this one. Well, Coleman checking it out. And if the ball hits the ground, which we believe it does, it'll be second down and 10. Yep, pretty clear. The more interesting part of that play took place after the play when Terrell Suggs and Peyton Manning were going at it. After reviewing the play, the ball hit the ground. The pass is incomplete. It'll be second and 10 at the 49-yard line. Please reset the clock to 4.05, please. Baltimore will not be charged a timeout. Suggs got a little free shot at Peyton Manning, took it. Watch Manning turn around and say, where's the love? Suggs sees him. Talk to the referee, and then here it goes. He's got a few things to say himself. Well, they've been they've been teammates in a few Pro Bowls, but we're not in Honolulu tonight. Hey! Second Otter. and ten. <laughs> it's got three here. <laughs> Eighty-six at the start of the game. And that movement on the left side of the offensive Ball line. Ball start number Clady. seventy-eight. Offense five-yard penalty. Still second down. Second down. 15 now. You know, it's interesting. If he had moved initially, as soon as the Ravens jumped across the line, he may have gotten a call on the defensive side. But they moved, went back, and then Clady tried to do a late jump out there to draw the flag. It was too late, and the officials called it properly. Meanwhile, Manning, who threw a touchdown pass when he put the glove on before, goes barehanded here. Second down and 15. Time and going deep in the pass to the outside of Thomas, and the coverage is very good by Jimmy Smith. Third and 15 now. Jimmy Smith handled that double move very well. Right out here, he's a guy that they say has gained great confidence since the Super Bowl. That's a tough one right there. I'm not so sure that wasn't another one of Peyton's attempts to give him an audible. They think they uh, know what it is, and then he... Does the double move on the outside, but Smith handled it perfectly. Third and 15. Hurry, hurry! They bunch three receivers to the left side. And Manning looking over there and then runs out of time, and that is Suggs who gets in there for the sack. Here we go. Elvis Doomerville is going to get this sack basically for Terrell Suggs. He beats Clady on the outside, but who do they chip? They chip on the other side against Elvis Doomerville. That balancing of the pass rush is going to create opportunities for Terrell Suggs that he simply didn't have a season ago. And now Lardarius Webb will go back to receive this punt from Britton Colquitt. Again with Jones hurt. Jones not only the starting wide out, it returns all kickoffs and punts, but not for the rest of the night. Fair caught at the 16-yard line with 319. Harbaugh, in a bit of news that would be not at all surprising, just had his contract officially extended by the Baltimore Ravens. So I think he's going to go now through the 2016 season. Say they made a, a, a tremendous choice, Steve. A shot of the owner and Ozzie Newsom, who's done such a phenomenal job as the Ravens general manager. Harbaugh was a guy that nobody was really talking about at that point. He's been mainly a special teams coach in Philadelphia, then it coached the secondary. And remember, Jason Garrett could have had that job and turned it down. And we'll see Garrett on Sunday night against the Giants. Just another way to get a promo in. <laughs> 
Smooth. First and ten from the 16-yard line. And Flacco to the outside. The pass is incomplete. The other night we were talking to Tony Dungy at dinner you know, about what do you look for if you were general manager these days? What do you look for in a head coach? I look for John Harbaugh. You know, he, he's a guy that a very non-traditional route. Typically, it's the hot offensive coordinator, the hot defensive coordinator. But I think the way he kept this team together, you know, they had a nasty meeting in the media, middle of the season last year. But he took control. They weathered the storm and went on and won the Super Bowl. May have caused a little thinning of the herd from some players there. Rice to the outside turns nothing into a little something. Well, for a few years, it, it was owners would say, can you find me the next Mike Tomlin? Now it's Tomlin and, and Harbaugh. Take a look at that. Reaching the playoffs each of the first five years. Cower six. Paul Brown six. Chuck Knox five. And John Harbaugh seeking a sixth in a row. And he's going to play off game in each of those five. And there is Ozzie Newsom. General manager, executive vice president. And what a tremendous job he has done. Third and four. And that is caught, and that'll move the change to the 29, Marlon Brown. When you're a GM and your first two picks, when the franchise is now in Baltimore, are Ray Lewis in the first round and John Jonathan Ogden as well in the first round, that ain't bad. Ogden went into the Hall of Fame this year, and Lewis, of course, will go into the Hall of Fame in five years. You know, Ozzie would have had a chance to get in the Hall of Fame as a GM and already did as a player, right. so... Pretty amazing career. We go to the two-minute warning with the game tied on opening night at 14. Stay tuned for the Toyota halftime. You'll hear from Eli Manning, Tony Romo, and the players inside the Giants-Cowboys rivalry, which resumes this Sunday night right here on NBC. Dan, Tony, and Rodney will have their take on the first half as the NFL season kicks off tonight. In Denver, he joined us late. We had a 33-minute weather delay at the start of the game because of lightning in the area. Game tied at 14, first down. With two minutes to go on the wide open. Over the middle is Marlon Brown. And Brown, who has to pick up the slack with Jones in the locker room for the first down for 23 yards. I tell you, do not go to sleep on Marlon Brown. This kid can play. He made some spectacular plays during the course of the preseason and on the other side Dominic Rogers for Marty basically pitching a shutout on his side and half to the half and that's a nice tackle made on Dallas Clark on the outside by Raheem Moore limiting him to a gain of five yards you know no champ Bailey and no Von Biller and now we have a player cramping up Chris Harris in the middle of the field Chris Harris with the earlier pick with a cramp Broncos hoping it's just a cramp. Chris Harris has to come out at least for one play. He's big, especially in the absence of Champ Bailey in the secondary. So to the bench he goes at least for one play. And now you've got Kayvon Webster, rookie out of South Florida, who now comes in. I'm sure Flacco is locked in on that right now. Second down and five. throws and the pass is incomplete Clark looks for a flag Dallas Clark doesn't see one Danny Trevathan with the coverage third down that, that's beautiful right there Danny Trevathan just plays this perfectly number 59 will turn outside no foul on the play that's really well done and these two guys can run they're inside backers Trevathan and Wesley Woodyard they're like the two guys from San Francisco they can cover anybody Third and five. Blitz coming. Flacco, though, protected well and picks up the first down. And that's Dallas Clark over the middle to the 36-yard line, and the clock ticks down to a minute. Mike Adams makes the stop. Well, you've got Von Miller out. Remember that. So now they're having to try and blitz to get some pressure. If you blitz and don't get there, somebody is going to get open in that man coverage. That is too long to give Flacco. Long did its job. Black will have the time to find Clark. Slides to his left. Open man makes the catch. Corey Smith. 
who's been pretty silent for the most part tonight, tackled by Mike Adams, their number one receiver, had that tremendous breakout year last year, makes his third catch of the game. Cromartie's going to try and get the jam, but then he just slides right in behind there. You see the guy coming out in the flat to hold Cromartie. Flacco taking advantage. They really need Torrey Smith to get in this game. He is their big play guy. First and 10, 39 seconds. I think they're coming out of the man coverage because of the rookie in there. This is Rice. And Rice will pick up a first down to the eight yard line. This is a, a perfect drive in a couple of ways for Baltimore. They're moving down the field, they're approaching the end zone, and they're leaving no time for Manning. Perfectly done, and Joe Flacco, who's been given a lot of room to audible at the line of scrimmage, I think has noticed what I've seen. They're going back to these deep zones to try and protect Kayvon Webster. He said, okay, fine, you want to put two safeties in the end zone I'll give it to my all pro Ray Rice and take it right down your throat you can't protect everything you try to protect young players on the outside you have to give up something first and goal now Blacko to the corner and it's batted away and it's incomplete that's Webster, the rookie we talked about. Brandon Stokely, the intended receiver and the rookie who's had to come in and play on this series. Champ Bailey is hurt. Chris Harris had to come out. Breaks it up, second and goal. That helps. You got the man coverage. Flacco saw it. He goes right at it, and he breaks it up. Now maybe if you're Joe Flacco, you say, well, maybe the kid can play. That helps. And second and goal, nothing there. It's going to make it third down and goal. Each team with two timeouts. Of course, Harbaugh, now he's going to take the timeout here, making sure that at the other at the other end, whenever Denver gets the ball back, they'll have next to no time, if any time. 15 seconds, third and goal. A little recap maybe of... What's happened right now, you had that severe lightning storm at least in the area. We had some rain in the stadium. Nothing really insidious. Flacco tonight, 183 yards. He's already thrown 29 passes. Manning with two touchdown passes, each to his tight end, Thomas. There's one of them right there. First two career touchdown catches. But now Baltimore in a position to go into the locker room with a three or a seven-point lead. Third and goal. well and the pass broken up Dallas Clark the intended receiver Trevathan is back there covering on the play to break it up with 10 seconds I'm telling you Danny Trevathan and Wesley Woodyard can fly they watch him they're just coming across the field here he can run with Dallas Clark absolutely no oh he dropped it I thought Trevathan broke it up he just yeah. Ooh, flat wow. cold dropped it oh my goodness <laughs> Well, that was the clock was dropping a bunch in preseason. But they needed a tight end. Dixon was getting healthy. Pitt is out. And Clark got signed, and then Tucker kicks it through from 25 yards away. So it could have been seven. Instead, it's just three. It's 17-14. Mm. is right. The new guys, Wes Walker with the fumble on the punt return and then Dallas Clark with a freebie I mean, that wasn't even close you could go a year without seeing him drop one that easily from Peyton Manning back in the day with the Colts it's a heck of a game though isn't it it's a good game yeah it really well, is I mean these two teams you look at the great and dramatic playoff games in NFL history and that's that's right up there in the top five last year that was phenomenal John Elway, he's, he saw a few games. You know, it's a funny thing. If you're a Bronco fan, maybe you can take some solace in the fact when Elway was in his third to last year as a quarterback, they lost 
a wild card game to Jacksonville when the Jaguars were in their second year in the league. It was a stunning and shocking upset here. When everybody thought Denver might go to the Super Bowl, all of a sudden they get whacked by Jacksonville as Tucker's kick will not be returned. But what happened the next two years? They won the Super Bowl and then they won the Super Bowl again. And of course, John rode off into a Rocky Mountain sunset. You know, talking about former players that turned into great GMs, he really, I, he worked some magic with Peyton Manning. There's no question about it. The relationship that those two guys had and the fact that John had experienced the success, the two Super Bowls at the end of his career, I think had something to do with Peyton Manning signing on. He knew the formula. And we'll kneel down, we'll end it here. And the teams will go to the locker rooms with the visitors up by three. Coming up next, it will be the Toyota Halftime Show. Bronx get the second half kickoff. Back after these messages from your NBC station. Opening night, it is halftime here in Denver, Colorado. 17 to 14. The Ravens on top, and both Denver touchdowns coming from a tight end in his third year in the league, but he's been off injured into the end zone twice. Julius Thomas. Did a great job, and he's the subject of our Burger King inside edge. We'll take a look here. He was pretty much as advertised early on, trying to make a few blocks, and that didn't go so well. But when he got out, the former basketball player and some pass routes, Awfully tough to defend for linebackers and safeties alike. This time Michael Huff got the little delay and go, and go he went. So that's it for tonight. The Burger King Inside Edge. Check out more insights from tonight on NBC Sports Live Extra. Tonight, the Denver Broncos, in terms of receiving, four for 97 for the tight end. Welker had four very early, and then, of course, uh, the punt, which... Turned out to be a disaster at the two-yard line. Thomas, Moreno, and Decker with one each. Manning is 11 of 19 for 160. And his offense will go right to work in the third quarter. Trendon Holiday had both a punt return for a TD and a kickoff return for a TD. Last year, you talk about a guy who had a pretty good year. He's in Houston. They're five and zero at that point. They let him go. He comes here when the Broncos started their 11-game winning streak. So he was 16 and zero in the regular season last season. You know what John Fox say? He would have been on Dancing with the Stars instead of Jacoby Jones if the game had gone the other way. Isn't that the truth? And once again, as has been the case on almost every kickoff tonight, a touchback, and we go to Michelle. Well, speaking of Jacoby Jones, he and Michael Orr both still doubtful to return to this game. I saw Michael Orr go in for x-rays on that right foot ankle area. So both of those guys doubtful, but John Harbaugh told me he's confident in their replacements, Marlon Brown and Ricky Wagner. As for John Fox, the two touchdowns he got out of Julius Thomas, he said, look, they're just singling that guy. They're covering all our other receivers, so we're going to continue to go to him as long as they do that. Now, uh, thank you, Michelle. He's been the target tonight. He's been his favorite target. They've got Moreno starting in the backfield on first down from the 20-yard line. Base 4-3 alignment for the defense, and it's good enough. Elvis Doomerville comes in to get the sack. A smattering of boos. Well, one of the problems we just showed you, Julius Thomas, when it comes to blocking, not his strength, and Doomerville goes right by him before Orlando Franklin can come over to help, but you know that one feels good. Three Pro Bowls for him. The pass to the outside is caught. Moreno takes it up to the 21-yard line. But it's still going to be third down and nine after a gain of eight. Broncos going no huddle, but not the warp speed no huddle that they exhibited in their next-to-last preseason game against the Rams. Stacking receivers left and right. Third down and nine. And to the outside. And going down is Welker to make the catch at the 31-yard line. So they go from second and 17. Graham is saying the ball hit the ground. He's looking over to Harbaugh. He's trying to get Harbaugh to challenge. Sure did. It did, yeah. 
And now Harbaugh can challenge this. Instead of it being a first down, it would be a fourth Snap down. Manning's ball, trying baby. to get the ball snapped. Oh, wow. Oh, he, he missed an opportunity for what would have been an overturn. And now, Demarius Thomas, look at this. Thomas down the sideline for a long game. Forced out by Smith. So great, you saw great, you saw Graham looking over to Harbaugh saying throw the challenge leg, but he didn't. They probably would have won it. Here it is again. No doubt about oh, it. Yeah. That's a drop. That's the punt team on the field, and that's Demarius Thomas not getting a chance to do this. So a huge break for the Broncos. And again, that's one of those things where Harbaugh sometimes is talking to the guys upstairs, and they're seeing the play as well, saying challenge or don't challenge. It was too late. Lonnie Hillman now in the game. Checking your back at San Diego State, and he will carry the ball to a nice hole over the right side to the 28-yard line. He's tackled there by Josh Bynes. One of the many benefits of going to the no-huddle offense is the opposing coach doesn't get a lot of time to look at these replays. That is no question, 100% a drop, and it was a costly mistake for John Harbaugh. Second down and three from the 28-yard line. And it is a fingertip catch for a touchdown, but a flag is down. Andre Caldwell beating Jimmy Smith with a juggling catch, but a flag is down. For the moment, a 28-yard touchdown. Flag down at the 22. Here's Coleman. Holding. Defense. Penalty's declined. Touchdown. What a turn of events on this drive. Great job by Andre Caldwell. He bobbles this ball, but manages to keep his feet in bounds until he can get it back under control. Good move off the line of scrimmage. Little bobble there, but he doesn't step out. Completes the catch. The foot gets close, but I don't think so. Well, they're looking at it upstairs as they do with all scoring plays. He appears to have possession there. He's inside the pylon. It should count. You can oh. see just this. Just a bit of green between his shoe and that white line right there. And he has possession before he crosses the goal line. So Coleman waiting for the confirmation. He gets it. Denver takes the lead. Prater to convert. So Harbaugh misses the opportunity to challenge. They would have won it. Instead, Denver goes down the field and scores. And the Broncos have a four-point lead early in the third. This NBC kickoff special being brought to you by Burger King, where taste is king. By Hyundai, new thinking, new possibilities. By the Samsung Galaxy S4, the next big thing is here. And by Tyco, 15 minutes to save you 15% on car insurance. Now Michael's Chris Cosworth, Michelle DeFoy in the Sea of Orange. Two and a half into the second half. Denver on top by four. Catch by Caldwell is first of the night. Chris. Exactly what I was going to say. First one last year just had one catch all season. Big one already. And Prater with a kick that may be returned, but no. Bernard Pierce feels it. Touchback. Well, we talked about the power of the fullback, Monte Leach, coming back to Baltimore and when you're playing against smaller inside linebackers that the Broncos have, anytime they can get him isolated on those guys, here's that touchdown pass. But his blocks have been really significant here against Duke and Nacho. Spring Rice for the second touchdown. There's Leach in the game again. You've got a rookie right tackle, Ricky Wagner. Fifth round pick out of Wisconsin with his oar is out. And Jacoby Jones down for the play the rest of the night, and the rice gets taken down by Nate Irving. It's a great job by Irving, but nobody blocked him at all. I don't know what the mix-up was on this one. It looked like Bryant McKinney was supposed to turn out on Nate Irving, 
He doesn't, and his back pays the price. And there was Jones, and he's definitely done for the night. Sprung in knee, and we just hope that he's ready a week from Sunday when they open up at home against Cleveland. Good protection. Flacco bends it incomplete. Ed Dixon can't hang on to it. It'll be third down and 12. Well, right now, the loss of Dennis Pittett is starting to rear its head. Dallas Clark drops the touchdown just before the half, and now Pittett can't, or uh, Ed Dixon can't hold on to that one. They got a lot of plays out of their tight end last year, and so far, not here tonight. Third and 12 amidst this deafening roar. And Flacco's going to go down, and the roar will get even louder. Sean Phillips, many years at San Diego, stays in the division, comes around from the backside and sacks him. Really a lot of pressure on Sean Phillips. He's going to have to pick up the slack until Von Miller gets back, catches a break in this game. The backup Rick Wagner, no match for Sean Phillips. Great job with his hands. You see Wagner trying to get his hands out. Phillips just knocked him right away. 70 and a half career sacks now for Sean Phillips. Oliver is back to receiving the kick is blocked. And rolling at the 10 yard line. A blocked kick. And Peyton Manning will get the football at the 10 yard line. David Bruton, one of the guys in there. David Bruton right here is going to split the gap. They pay attention to the outside rush band, and he comes right through, took a chance. Probably going to be roughing the punter, but he is a guy that knows what he's doing. He's a special teams captain. He was a Pro Bowl alternate and came up huge there. Sam Cook in the league since 06, third career block, last one in 09. First and goal with the ball right at the 10. And Manning with the pump fake and then throws underneath. And Rucker catches it for a game of close to four. Stopped by Graham. It'll be second down and goal. The Ravens have had issues with special teams especially you go back to that playoff game obviously we give up the, the two returns and now a block punt tonight putting Manning in a second and goal position at the six yard line to the outside and he's caught and spinning away from the touchdown Wes Welker coverage the stack is so tough they're going to switch it off with the cornerbacks they do a good job with that but Wes Welker just like he did on that big play to pick up the first down comes back to the football and you can tell Peyton Manning is looking for him now there is a comfort level already I'm sure Peyton's thinking no wonder Tom Brady liked that guy so much and the extra point is good spun away from Grant so he's caught a whole bunch from Brady, and now one from Peyton after the block kick. Denver by 11. The pivotal event of the playoffs, the BMW Championship, will determine the final 30 players who will advance for the FedEx Cup title. Coverage begins Thursday, September 12th on the Golf Channel. Continues over the weekend, Saturday, September 14th, right here on NBC. Suggs with a few words for his group. Tell you what, this Denver Broncos offense looks more and more dangerous. Julius Thomas and Wes Welker working inside. Wait and see. Demarius Thomas and Eric Decker are about to get their opportunities on the outside. That's how it works. You beat them inside, opportunities come outside. 
way out of the end zone. Talk about Welker. In his years in New England, he caught 34 touchdown passes from Brady. Now he's caught one from Manning. He ties Manning ties a record tonight with four touchdown passes, 23rd game with four or more, tying the mark he now shares with Brett Favre. So four TD passes. Two to Thomas, one to Welker, one to Caldwell. And they start on the ground. Here's your million second quiz for a million bucks. Can you name the other two quarterbacks that Wilkins caught score passes from touchdown passes? Uh, they're all down in Miami. Well, no, nah, <laughs> one of them is. Matt Castle is one. The year he took over for Brady with the injured knee. Yeah. And then Miami is the other one. I don't know. I can barely remember two <laughs> names of these quarterbacks. Joey Harrington. No, I don't know about that. Second and ten. Bernard Pierce gets bowling ball down. Wesley Woodyard knocking him down after a short game. It'll be third down and eight. If the defensive linemen, the upfront defensive linemen for the Broncos continue to play the way they have tonight, Terrence Knight and Kevin Vickerson, Mitch Unline, these linebackers are going to have hundreds of tackles. They are protecting those guys so that they can run sideline to sideline. It's working. And over the middle and getting hit as the ball got there. Raheem Moore flashed Dallas Clark, but it's incomplete. And Clark is hurt. And so for Raheem Moore, and of course he was the, the man in the crosshairs the last time they faced each other with Jacoby Jones beating him for the touchdown pass and then Clark gets blasted fourth down. How good do you think that feels for Raheem Moore after an entire offseason of everybody blaming him for the loss to come up and make a play like that. He said he went home, he couldn't sleep all night, he knew what it meant to his team, he knew what it meant to this city and all he could do was go back to work and go back to work he did and that was a huge play. And that's another very fast three and out. So it's fourth down. Cook's last part was blocked. This one's a wobbly short kick. that goes out of bounds somewhere up around the 40-yard uh, line. So troubles for Cook, troubles for the Ravens. And Denver taking advantage. 28-17 Broncos. Now that's on the steps of the Denver State Capitol. Now, who would do that? I mean, art imitating life. Raheem Moore reaching back. Jacoby Jones pulling it in. Who would do that, Chris? I have no comment. But I bet you it's somebody we know. From the 37-yard line after Moore blasted Clark forcing the punt. Ronnie Hillman with a flag coming in at the end of the play to the 41-yard line. No question, huh? It'll look at you, it's hands, hands to the face, 55 defense. Five yards from the end of the run, first down. Well, we always talk about missed opportunities, and when you look at this game, Chris, John Harbaugh wishes he would have had that one moment back to challenge a play that he probably would have won the challenge on, and the next thing you know, within seconds, Denver scores a touchdown. It completely changed the game. I mean, it completely changed the game, and there was plenty of opportunity. There it was. To see that replay, we showed that replay, and for some reason, the communication between whoever is watching upstairs never got to John Harbaugh. I have no explanation for why not. Then you had two long pass plays. Then you had a block punt. Two quick touchdowns, less than... Six minutes have elapsed here in the third quarter, and the Broncos have turned a three-point halftime deficit into an 11-point lead. And Manning gets hit after he throws, but it's caught by Ronnie Hillman. And Hillman, one of the three running backs by committee to the 38-yard line, where he's tackled by Josh Bynes. That's a gain of 17. Julius Thomas gets his revenge here. Watch this one. On Trent Sucks. Oh, that was a shot. 
I don't even think Suggs was paying any attention to him anymore. They fake. Hillman again. Hillman just shoved out of bounds near the first down marker. You know, it's interesting. Ronnie Hillman's a, a smallish guy. And I was talking to Dean Pease about it. I said, when he's in the game, are you going to try and blitz him to make him block somebody? And he said, no, because I know what they're going to do. They're going to get him out of the backfield and throw him the ball, and that's exactly what's happening. Meanwhile, the Broncos picking up the pace to the outside to Thomas again. And Julius Thomas having a huge night. Adam Gase is the new offensive coordinator. First season as the Broncos OC quarterbacks coach last year. Last year's offensive coordinator Mike McCoy is now the head coach in San Diego. And two years ago, Dennis Allen was the defensive coordinator. And he's now, of course, the head coach in Oakland. John Fox with a pretty good coaching tree of late. Hurry, hurry! From the 15-yard line. And Manning throwing and a little overthrown as Thomas on a stop and go. And the pass a little overthrown, beating Corey Graham second down. Adam Gase is trying to get the play into Peyton Manning as soon as as the ball hits the ground. He's already called it in. They have rehearsed that over and over. As he said the only thing that slows us down is the microphone won't click on until the referee blows it ready for play. So he is literally champing at the bit trying to get that play into Peyton Manning. That was his first incompletion of the half and now to give the ball to the rookie from Wisconsin, Monte Ball, who gets to the six yard line to make it third down and one now, halfway through the third quarter. Julius Thomas maybe not so good blocking in the first half, but a little bit better here in the second half. If he can just hold his own with the things that he can do as a receiver, he's going to be quite the weapon. Hurry, hurry! It's a ball to the outside, looking for the first down. Has it, looking for the touchdown. Doesn't get it. It sets up a first and goal at the two-yard line. Jimmy Smith rides him down. Well, Monte Ball is going to give this Broncos offense some power they haven't had in the past. Louis Vasquez came around with a great block, but with Monte Ball around the goal line for short yardage, he's a guy that knows how to do it. Well, I think he broke a record, an NCAA record for Division I touchdowns scored back in college. 77 rushing TDs. Played there one year with Russell Wilson, the Seattle quarterback. And Manning throws a fade and it's dropped. Eric Decker was there off his fingertips. Jimmy Smith with the one-on-one -on -one coverage, second and goal. Great job by Peyton Manning. He saw the all-out blitz coming and goes to his touchdown maker, 13 touchdowns a year ago. And just like Dallas Clark, right between his fingers. Amazing. Second and goal. Rolling right. Wide open. Wes Welker. Five touchdown passes for Manning tonight. Didn't even have to pick on that one. That was an auto pick. Come down here and everybody gives up. These two guys just quit. They don't even try to follow Wes Welker. Don't know if there's confusion or what, but that looks like a tired defense out there right now for the Ravens. First game of the year, no huddle, altitude. It is about to get ugly. Manning's last game with more than four touchdown passes nine years ago. Colts against Detroit. He threw six that day. Traded for the point after. And the Denver Broncos, with six and a half to go in the third quarter, have assumed command on opening night, 35-17. Gary Underwood to open it up in three nights. Our first Sunday night game will be down in Texas. Giants, Cowboys, another Manning, Eli, and then uh, in a week and a half, it's Eli and Peyton as Denver goes to take on the Giants at the Meadowlands. Kickoff. 
resulting in yet another touchback, and the ball comes out to the 20-yard line where the Baltimore Ravens have dug an 18-point hole. Probably couldn't have had a tougher assignment than Peyton Manning when you've got this remade defense on the other side. No Ray Lewis, no Ed Reed, no Bernard Pollard, no Donnell Ellerby. Trying to fit all the pieces back together. I'm sure it's going to be better later, but tonight, Peyton Manning's putting on a clinic for them. Blacko chased, almost sacked, and has to, to sling it away. Second and ten. Kevin Vickerson looking for an intentional grounding, but of course he's outside the tight end box there, and you're allowed to throw it away. The big guy right there has done a job. Once you get outside the area in red, as long as you reach the line of scrimmage, you can throw it away. Blacko to the outside, Brandon Stokely, pick up about eight, setting up a third down and two. You know, for Joe Flacco and for any quarterback, there just is a comfort level. I, I thought he really established something with Anquan Bolden. You know, it took him a little while to figure it out, the whole concept of throwing it to a receiver who was covered, because that's when Anquan Bolden was at his best. Throw it up, give him a chance to go fight for the ball, and you kind of get the feeling that Flacco's looking for who is that guy going to be for me? Meanwhile, the defense has done a pretty good job on Torrey Smith tonight. Of course, he's minus his running mate and Jacoby Jones and Ray Rice gets stopped. And the question is, did he get to the 30-yard line? And a skirmish breaks out. And they're going to spot it just shy of the 30-yard line. Vickerson and Yonda got into it. Jack Del Rio, who's seen a few skirmishes in his time, the defensive coordinator. And Baltimore to punt. Derek Wolf's going to come right down here and hit Ray Rice solidly in the backfield. I tell you, Derek Wolf has come off that spinal concussion and had a big impact tonight. Sam Cook to punt. The sixth of the game, Trendon Holiday sets up at the 20-yard line. To the 13. Holiday gets a block. And Holiday gets spun around and knocked down to the 26-yard line. A little less than five to go in the third quarter with the Broncos up by 18. I'm opening. Peyton Manning chasing Brett Favre. Brett, 71, 838 passing yards. Most TD passes at 508. Manning in pursuit. His season averages are there. If he maintains his averages, he would break the passing record in the 15th game of 2015 and the sixth game in touchdown passes of 2015. So he's on that kind of a pace right now. The ball is at the 26-yard line. And no Sean Moreno starts as the running back. And Manning, with his foot still on, on the gas pedal, hits Welker at the 40-yard line. A flag is down. Holding, number 27, offense. 10-yard penalty, still first down. That's Moreno. You know, Chris, I'm thinking about Manning. And you go back a year. It was opening night. We were here against Pittsburgh, but there was so much mystery. He'd missed a year. Could he play? Was his career over after the 2011 season? Four neck surgeries. All questions answered, huh? Yeah, you know, and, and they didn't start very fast last season. They, I can remember the game he went down to Atlanta. I think it was the second game of the year. Threw three interceptions in that game, and everybody was going, oh, he can't drive the ball down the field anymore, and they won whatever, nine in a row. 11 by the time the season was done. Moreno picks up the first down. So on a first and 20, after he crossed him the 10 yards with a holding penalty, he nets the first down on the gain of 23. If you're a tight end, you're eventually going to have to block. And there's Julius Thomas working against Elvis Doomerville. 
That's good enough. Now no Sean Marino to sneak out of the backfield. This is just a clinic. And Moreno gets knocked down as he crosses the line of scrimmage by Purnell McPhee. Again, there's Gase. You can't get to him fast enough. You want to see him call the play. <laughs> You're going to have to leave a little camera in the in the corner of your screen there because he is calling those plays as fast as that microphone turns on. Right. Sometimes you jump the gun a little bit. And Manning will step away, but not very far as Chris Canty. Former giant is able to uh, run him down. Well, they are really excited about the play of Chris Canty. We were talking to Terrell Suggs about him last night. And he said, I know everybody's talking about Elvis Duberville, but Chris Canty now, healthy and back from that knee, is a guy that they have to slide their line towards him. So they can't constantly be sliding the line back toward me. That time he beat Zane Beatles, who went to the Pro Bowl a season ago. Third and 14 from the 35-yard line. Hurry, hurry! And Manning running away, throwing on the run, and it's incomplete. Welker had actually gotten position and had gotten behind Webb, but the pass behind both of them, and it's fourth down. And I tell you, it has helped. Uh, Ladarius Webb kind of lost track of the ball, but once they've moved Ladarius Webb over to Wes Welker, at least it hasn't been quite as brutal. Here he's able to stay, he's turning around like a ball. And Welker just going the other way. And Webb back to return the kick. Here comes four four and made at the 17 yard line and then a flag comes in because of contact and then a little bad blood at this particular point in the game jimmy smith is involved I think he's the guy who's gonna wind up with the penalty call yep Well, after the fair catch was made, wasn't a brutal hit, and probably just lost track of where the ball was. After the play is over, well, I don't think he personal lost foul, track. number 22, of the return team. At the distance of the goal, first down. You know, it's at a moment like that, you wonder what would Ray Lewis have to say on the sideline. There's going to have to be people that fills that role for the Ravens. This is a team that cannot beat themselves. They're not that good. They're going to have to play smarter this year and not lead the league in penalties again. Six total yards in the first 12 minutes of the second half. And of course, the Broncos with three touchdowns. Flacco airs one out down the left side and it's incomplete intended for Torrey Smith covered by Dominique Rogers Cromarty. They've done a nice job on Mr. Smith tonight limiting him to three catches. Right outside here is the guy that I think is having a huge ball game. Champ Bailey got burned repeatedly last year by Torrey Smith and now Dominique Rogers Cromarty has come over here. Jack Del Rio told him if you're not willing to be coached hard don't come here. You did not play well last year in Philadelphia. I can fix it, but you have to be willing to be coached hard. And that's what he's done. And this is caught by Dallas Clark. At the 13-yard line. Tackled there by Trovath in a short game. Third and seven next. I tell you, it's been a pleasure to watch the man coverage, not just of the cornerbacks, but of these inside backers, when Champ Bailey returns, and he will, this team is going to be loaded with cover downs. And Flacco throws, and that's caught, and forward Flacco shouldn't hit the first down as Dallas Spark made the catch outside the 20-yard line, and that will move the chains with two and a half to go in the quarter. Now, Dallas Clark needed that one, did a good job that time working against Wesley Woodyard, comes back to the ball, 
really the only thing that saved you. See some of the infighting in there. When you get those tight ends on linebackers, you saw the little undercut and the push off, and all well, that's uh, all good and loving the world. Ravens first, first down of the half. And getting there simultaneously with the ball was Duke Iannaccio making contact with Dallas Clark on legal second down. This Duke Iannaccio flashes. When you put on the tape of him, he will come out of nowhere fast. And he keeps coming up and making big plays around the line of scrimmage. You think of guys like John Lynch over the years that could start 15 yards off the ball and end up making a play on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Took a job away from Mike Adams. Strong safety spot. Second down and 10. And the pass is incomplete. Intended for Marlon Brown who had to swing around. Covered there by Tony Carter. Third down. Well, one of the things that they wanted to do this year that they did not do last year was bang these receivers a little bit coming off the ball. Not give them the free release. Last year, they let Torrey Smith just get a free release and he tore them up. That time, Marlon Brown unable to hang on, but they're trying to be more physical with the Ravens receivers this year. Carter 5'9", doing a nice job on the 6'5", Brown. Carter just walked off the field, slightly shaken, third and ten. And that's batted up in the air and incomplete. Delayed blitz coming. David Booten comes in there. Ball batted. Action on the sideline. Iannaccio is down on his knees. It's fourth down. All kinds of stuff going on on that one. They, they did have Torrey Smith wide open and Flacco just didn't see him. They were unsettled in the secondary. Had a chance for a touchdown on that play. Flacco looked left and Torrey Smith was wide open right. The pressure forces quick decisions and sometimes After the play bad is over, personal foul, number 66 of the offense. Half the distance to the goal, fourth down. Center, Gino Gronkowski. Replay, we'll take a look at where Torrey Smith was. Torrey Smith, the outside receiver. Coverage gets blown. There's nobody on that half of the field. He's absolutely wide open. Joe Flacco's looking the other way. But again, the pressure, you have to give credit to Jack Del Rio dialing up the pressure, taking a chance, and it paid off. Sam Cook's seventh punt of the night. Shingen Holiday back to receive it. Good deep kick as he backs up here for the 29. Brings it back out to the 42-yard line. And Bruton is down on the play. Bruton's had a big night. Yeah, very active tonight. Mm. Blocked a cook punt earlier. Setting up a touchdown, but now he's the man who needs the staff's attention. So Sunday night. Rest of the league opening up Sunday and Monday, and we go to AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Eli Manning, Tony Romo, the Giants and the Cowboys football night gets them started at 7 Eastern time. One thing about Eli and the Giants, they love to play in Jerry World. They played there four right? times. Yep, they played there four times, and they're 4-0. Tony Romo and the guys are sick of hearing about it. Issues on both offensive lines on those two teams. Going to have to get it settled quickly. And the Ravens need to get a few things settled quickly. Whether Jacoby Jones and whether he can come back in short order. Home opener against Cleveland in Baltimore a week from Sunday. Looks like James the Hedebo chopped his knee out. Opening night is always the toughest night, Al. It really is. You just, you're exhausted. In preseason, you never play more than maybe two and a half quarters at the most. And then you're out here and it's a no huddle offense going both ways. It's a hot night. 
You're a mile, mile high. No, oh, it's a brutal opening night here, especially on the road, which should have never happened for the Ravens. They should have been playing in Baltimore here tonight. Tough assignment. Well, the Orioles did not want to move. The baseball schedule came out before the Ravens won the Super Bowl. This is Hillman. It's the first team since 03 when Tampa opened at Philadelphia, and that was the opening night for the for the uh, Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. First time the Super Bowl champs have opened on the road. And it all was because the baseball schedule had come out. The Orioles had a game tonight. League and the Ravens tried to get up to move it, and the Orioles said no. Second and six. And since they share a parking lot and the facilities are next to one another, that was the end of that. Otherwise, it would have been probably, I'm guessing, it would have been New England at Baltimore or Pittsburgh at Baltimore. Those are the two logical choices. Couldn't have been Denver because they play only one time, and that's here. John Harbaugh was actually glad. He said, I'm glad we're not going to have all the ceremony. We get to end last year and start a new year, but um, uh, wouldn't, maybe if you ask him at the, after the game, he might have right. a different answer. Right. Scratches from the record. Third down and six. Starts chasing Manning and knocks him down as he gets rid of it. It's incomplete. And a flag is down. Holding, number 74, offense. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. It's Orlando Franklin. So with a minute to go in the third quarter, a change of possession upcoming, but Denver has owned the period. But I will say this, Baltimore with back-to-back -back stops. Now it's up to the offense. Now Joe Flacco has to get something going here. There's no doubt that this is a team in transition. They are maybe now geared around their quarterback more than they've ever been and so now it's up to him in that leadership role to get it going there's still plenty of time here they really need a big special teams play that would help webb is back there and he will call for and make the fair catch at the 12 yard line broncos with the defense and the changes in the last two years 30 sacks from Von Miller 18 and a half of them coming last year 20 and a half with 11 of those last year from Elvis Doomerville now in Baltimore so 42 and a half for the rest of the team over two years but so far so good tonight some shaky stuff in the first half but they look good here in the second trying to keep it going against the Ravens trying to get back into the game with a minute to play in the period and underneath the pass goes to Marlon Brown and the 6'5 Brown takes the ball out to the 35 yard line for a first down well, now they finally get a little something going when you get linebackers that like to chase tight ends and bang them around a little bit sometimes you can catch them with those underneath routes that time's exactly what happened looked like Woodyard trying to hit Dallas Clark and the other guy went right by him. From the 34, going deep and incomplete. Torrey Smith, the intended receiver, and that's Tony Carter back there with him. It'll be second and 10. Tony Carter's had a nice game tonight. Chris Harrison's had a nice game tonight. Dominic Rogers Cromarty has been dominant tonight. If you go back to what happened in this game last year, this guy right here, Torrey Smith, tore him up. But tonight they have had answers all night. And Flacco, deep downfield but incomplete. Brandon Stokely trying to get free but couldn't. Third down. Well, basically now, Joe Flacco only has three wide receivers to deal with. And I tell you, Brandon Stokely looked tired on that one. He got a step behind and just was unable to hit that extra gear. But it's Torrey Smith, it's Brandon Stokely, and it's Marlon Brown right now. And that's it. And they're trying to go no huddle. And I'm sure they're wearing that. 37 years old is Stokely. Now how you will get tired. Third and ten. Sack. Joe Flacco with a pocket collapsing, Sean Phillips and Wesley Woodyard. And 
of the clock. Winding now, that will take us to the end of the quarter where the Denver Broncos outscore the Ravens 21-0 at the end of three, lead it 35-17. Back after these messages. By above the Colorado State Capitol, tonight's aerial coverage brought to you by GEICO. Looking down at Denver on this Thursday night. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle Tafoya. 35-17 Denver. And we'll start with a punt. Off the foot of Sam Cook. And then Welker is back in to receive it. And this time he holds it in at the 17-yard line. And Welker out past the 40. And his own man helps to knock him down as he crosses the 45-yard line. Adrian Robinson running into him. Well, a lot of great plays tonight from Peyton Manning and company, but here's the biggest play of the night. Drop pass by Wes Welker. Would have sent on the punt team if it had been challenged. It was not. Demarius Thomas takes it down the sideline on the next play, and that's really when the game broke open. Mm -hmm. Just wonder what happened with that communication. And Corey Graham immediately signaling to the bench, challenge, challenge, challenge. Not that coaches necessarily pay 100% heed to a player saying that they normally wait for upstairs. Absolutely. Hurry, hurry, Number 44. False start. You know, and sometimes Peyton Manning. Full start. Number 83. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Wes Walker's been in the news a lot tonight, hasn't he? <laughs> You know, sometimes the no huddle in, in the pace of Peyton Manning, you don't get a chance to see what happened on the replay, but on that one, there clearly was time. There was an opportunity. Seven. Right. Seven. Hot, hot, hot. Pistol first and 15. Up, up, up. Hey, Sean, hey, Sean. Hurry, hurry. And to the outside, the Walker again. Does his thing. It hit a ball. Making the tackle on the play. Walker with two touchdowns tonight. And he's caught nine passes for 67 yards. Yeah, it, it just looks dangerous, doesn't it? I mean, it really does. It looks like one of those kinds of years. Julius Thomas ends up playing the rest of the year like he has tonight. And Wes Welker working inside. A lot to stop. Second and nine. And over the middle, and it'll be caught by Eric Decker, who loses the ball, but fortunately for Denver, out of bounds. So they retain possession, knocked away by Jimmy Smith. Well, the big guy, Orlando Franklin, on the outside, working against Elvis Doomerville, who tries to go low. <laughs> I, you know, a uh, little suplex from wrestling or something. But, uh... Eric Decker got away with one. Sometimes the ball just bounces the right way for you. Hurry, hurry! <laughs> and Manning going for six more for Walker, and it's incomplete. Covered on the play by Lardarius Webb. You know, you look at these receivers, and you've got Welker now out of the slot. Decker. And Demarius Thomas, you know, are very good. He's over a thousand last year. You got the tight end, Julius Thomas. You know, you kind of almost in a way with the receivers. You go back to the days of the the three amigos, Ricky Natiel, Vance Johnson, and Mark Jackson with Elway in the Eagles. Well, Darius Webb is completely gassed out there, mm -hmm. and now he's coming on to blitz. <laughs> or was. It, it, Webb at the end of that play was back in the back of the end zone and you could almost see him go oh I've got to run all the way back up there and do this again Good. Dean Pease was telling me that he learned his lesson about trying to play man coverage number 65 offense five yard penalty still first down it was Vasquez Crowd on the replay there is Dean Pease, who was the head coach of Miami of Ohio when John Harbaugh was playing there. So they go back a long way. He also gave Adam Gase, the offensive coordinator for the Broncos, his first job while he was in college. Mm -hmm. Just came up to 
Dean Pease and asked for an opportunity, and they gave him some computer work, and next thing you know, he's offensive coordinator for the Broncos. And Moreno takes the ball into a scrum to the 26. Hey, look at the two head coaches here. There's Gase, the offensive coordinator, whose father-in-law is Joe Vitt, the assistant head coach to Sean Payton in New Orleans, and last year was the, the interim head coach. So good football background for for Adam. And working now on John Fox's staff. So the last two coordinators, the head coaching job. Third and nine. Well, we talked about it earlier. You beat them up on the inside, and then your outside guys get a chance. There's no help whatsoever. Beautiful release off the line of scrimmage. Went up to Demarius before the game, and I said, tell me, is Peyton throwing it harder and better than he did last year? He said, no doubt about it. And he said, the deep ball is the great teller, and he has been throwing them great. Six touchdown passes for Manning tonight. Tying a career high. 04 through a six against Detroit, we referred to earlier. Prater for the extra point. What a night for Payton. What a night for the Broncos, who actually trailed by three at the half. This kickoff special being brought to you by Tide, trusted by all 32 teams. By Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing by windows and by GE brilliant machines are transforming the way we work well not only does John Elway uh, run this team in terms of football operations he's got a steakhouse in downtown Denver one of three owned by number seven get your table too a good one that is the man right there I knew him back in the day he went to many a golf tournament with him always a show Boy, is he loved around here. Playing his college ball, of course, at Stanford. Dad was a fine coach. Jack Elway. He's bouncing baby boy. Pretty good executive. 42 to 17, Bronx. Broncos in the first half, taking 22 and a half seconds per play, and then picking up the pace here in the second half. Huge third quarter, a little bit more than 20 seconds, and that's the look of a team that uh, is out there on a night when it started out as 86 degrees, 75 degrees now, 33-minute weather delay, and the mile-high altitude all taking its toll. Peyton Manning taking his toll, too. Six touchdown passes. And that's the incompletion over the middle fingertip Grab not made by Dixon, second down and 10. Well, it would not have been an easy catch by any means, but the Ravens tonight have had opportunities to make great plays, great plays they made in the playoffs a year ago, and they have not been able to make them. They have had real struggles from the tight end position tonight. There was Pitta not being there has been a factor. Pierce takes the inside handoff. And defensively now, you've got to think this Ravens defense is going, guys, at least one first down. Will you give me one first down so I can get a little Gatorade over here so Peyton can't do that 20-second thing on us again. They are exhausted. I, I played in the no-huddle offense with Sam White in Cincinnati. There are points in the game when you look across the line and you go, these guys are done. They're exhausted. And I'm not sure we haven't started to reach that point for the Ravens. Third and eight. It is a yard shy of the first down, so they still won't get that first down. Brandon Stokely makes the catch. Interesting decision. Well, maybe they go for it. I mean, you're down by 25 points. I mean, if you're going to get back in this thing, you pretty much have to take your shot right here. I agree with this. Me too. Why not? 
fourth and one. Ordinarily, you think the Ravens and the way they run the ball, you just play power football here and pick it up. But the running game hasn't been that effective tonight either. Meanwhile, well, the clock is going to go all the way down. And Baltimore will take a timeout. Timeout, fourth and one when we come back. Ravens led by three at the half and had 15 first downs. And in his second half, it has been entirely the Broncos. 13 first downs. 28 nothing in terms of points in the second half. And now it's fourth and one as the Ravens try to keep any flickering hope minimally alive. And in San, it's an interception that will be run back by Trevathan for a pick six. One of the most difficult backs that there is to cover in the NFL. Trevathan had no problem. Did he drop the ball before he crossed the goal line? Oh, He's, my goodness. They're, they're saying touchback. Right yeah, look at this. Look at this. If he drops it. Oh and he does, goodness. and it goes out of the back of the end zone. It's going to be a touchback. Ball went out of the back of the end zone. It is a touchback. Oh. First down, Baltimore. Oh, yeah. You you would swear that everybody would learn by now. You've seen this so much in the NFL and college. Guys are celebrating beforehand. And meanwhile, on top of it, you got Wesley Woodyard. Who's down at the goal line? Any little assistance from the longtime trainer, the Greek Steve Antonopoulos. Well, right here, we've got Rice, and I mean, no problem. I talked about the coverage ability of these linebackers earlier in the game, and they have to really hope that this isn't forget the touchdown at this point. Wesley Woodyard is the heart and soul of this defense. They have to hope he's okay. That's not even close. Yeah. That ball is way out. And then it goes it goes out of the back of the end zone as well. And so much for that pick six. And I think Wesley Woodyard was hurt going for the ball. So the mistake amplified. Yard was chasing him down toward the goal line. Get a report on him, obviously, as quickly as we can. The ball is at the 20 yard line. Well, that's one way for the Ravens to get a first down. <laughs> it was fourth and one. Now it's first and ten. Swing it out to Rice. And Rice will get bounced out of bounds after a gain of about eight. See if we can go back and look at. Right there. Woodyard tries to get it, and then the Ravens come. Oh, my mm, goodness. Mm, mm, mm. Comes in and tries to get it, and then gets undercut. So a huge mistake could become even larger. Second and two. And that's a nice catch made on the outside by Ed Dixon, the tight end, for a first down. And Paris Lennon in the game now for the Broncos. They're down to their third middle linebacker. Stuart Bradley was going to be the middle linebacker. He's out with wrist surgery. Leslie Woodyard out, and now Paris Lennon. Lennon, 12 years in the league. Several teams. That's caught. Caught. And Clark will take the ball and lose the ball as he gets to the 31-yard line. Flag is down. Orange shirts all over the place. And a penalty marker is down back at the 32-yard line. So Clark coughs it up again after a big game. Webster comes up with it. That was good for 28 yards and then the fumble. And let's, now the flag. Let's see if there's a face mask by Raheem Moore on the tail end of this play. Here he comes. Yep. There's the head turns. 
Mm-hmm. And maybe Personal Dallas foul, Clark. Grasping the face mask, number 26 on the defense. 15 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. So finally something goes right for Dallas Clark tonight. And the Ravens. I'll tell you, they're going after Paris Lennon, too. That's two in a row. They've gone right after him in the middle. So you take an outstanding cover linebacker out of the game. This has been getting a little bit strange now. Mm -hmm. Still an opportunity. Plenty of time. Over 11 to go. Trevathan is back in there. From the 17. Over the middle. Rice should be dragged down from behind. At the 13 yard line by Nate Irving. Second down. So now Joe Flacco goes into his version of the no huddle here as well. But with, with only three wide receivers out there, you really have an issue. I mean, as much as you want to hustle and play hard, I, you know, it's hard. It, it really is. And you're, there's no relief in sight. 51st pass of the night from Flacco is caught by Marlon Brown. But a flag is down for the moment. He's into the end zone, but another penalty. I think it's offsides, though, on the Broncos pre-snap. Offside, defense. That penalty's declined. Touchdown. So it was going to be 49 to 17. And now, all of a sudden, we're an extra point away from 42 to 24. Marlon Brown, one of the few times that the Ravens receivers have won the one-on-one -on -one battles tonight, takes advantage. And here's the mistake. I mean, it just can't get any sillier than that. Nope. That would have been a 32-point lead with 11 minutes to go. I'm it's telling you, if I were a head coach in the National Football League, I'd say, listen, guys, your job, it's not your football, it's our football. You go and hand the ball to an official. It's just ridiculous to make that kind of mistake. I'm Barry Sanders and everybody a letter. <laughs> Act like you've been there before. Extra point is good by Tucker, and it's 42 to 24. Ravens still alive. Beginning this Monday right here on NBC, Ryan Seacrest hosting the Million Second Quiz. You can win the biggest prize in game show history. Premiering Monday night, 8 Eastern and Pacific. The shot we went to break with Jack Del Rio. Really getting on Trevathan, who had salted the game away and then drops the ball at the one-yard line. Next thing you know, the Ravens go 80 yards and at least are still alive. And Tucker sends that kick through the end zone. Ten and a half to go in the fourth quarter on opening night in Denver, Colorado. Peyton Manning, and by the time he is done, he's going to have just about everything. 23rd game, four more TD passes. Seventh game with five or more. 60 D passes in the game. That's a Broncos record. And if you're wondering about the NFL record, it is seven held by five different quarterbacks. Most recently, Joe Cap did it in 1969. And they hand the ball off to Monte Ball in a situation where Peyton now might take some time off the clock, and we go to Michelle. Well, an update on Wesley Woodyard. He is questionable with a right ankle, but, you know, I watched him getting taped up on the table the training table and he gave me a thumbs up and smiled he seems to be fine he was running around on the field cutting uh getting a feel for how that ankle felt giving everyone high fives i would be surprised if he didn't return but he's officially questionable right, thank you michelle and he has uh, some extra time to get ready for the next game because it won't be until a week from sunday when they take on the giants in the metal line second and eight peyton started to use the clock and the rookie out of Wisconsin to the 28-yard line, Monte Ball. So Ball has a chance now to emerge, but for the moment, he's the rookie. you got Hillman in his second year. you got Noshan Moreno. McGahee is gone. They like him a lot. Workhorse at Wisconsin. 
sooner or later you would think maybe he'll be the ace back. Yeah, and I think as soon as he learns the protections, the most important thing in this offense is protecting Peyton Manning, and that's always the thing that rookies struggle with, trying to figure out who to block. But now that they're in this run mode, at least temporarily here, he's in the game. Third and one. Very Stop interesting. So yeah, three, it's a three and out. With three runs. Yes, with Halote Nada. Well, clearly Peyton trying to milk the clock. But it's hard to milk it too much with a three and out. I don't know about all this. Here's Halote Nada right here. You're going to start trying to run on this team. And don't forget now, the Ravens defense got a much needed rest during that drive by their offense. And they come out and Peyton goes three straight runs. We saw that a little bit at the end of the uh, playoff game a year ago, and it didn't work out so well then either. Britton Cole quit sending it down to Lardarius Webb. And Webb has to back up. 18-yard line, cuts it back. Tackled at the 31 with 8.08 to play in the fourth. Well, you go back to the injuries tonight for the Ravens, this was Jones calling for the fair catch, getting run into by his own man. Then you got Orr, the right tackle, getting rolled up on by his own man, Yonda, so he's out. They've had the rookie Rick Wagner in there. And now the Baltimore Ravens, Woodyard is back in the game, Trevathan is in the game. But now you have to challenge Woodyard. You have to see where he is. Yako throws. That's caught. 35-yard line. Dallas Clark. If Baltimore won this game, that would be that would be the all-time capper. That would be the capper. Uh, they'd never recover around here. And it, it looks like, remember, he is the signal caller. He is the quarterback out there on the defense. So but it looks like maybe they might be going into a little bit more zone thinking maybe he can't handle his man coverage responsibilities we'll see if that continues halfway through the fourth quarter and the safety valve is pierced but it's behind him and upcoming a third down and six Getting pretty good work in this game out of Robert Ayers. He has one sack already. First well documented, no Von Miller. Other guys are going to have to step up. That time got good pressure with a bull rush against Bryant McKinney. He needs to be big. Flacco airing it out, going deep, and it's one-handed and caught by Torrey Smith. On a big third down conversion all the way down to the Denver 29-yard line. 34 yards over Tony Carter on Flacco's 54th pass of the game. I tell you, I thought this was pass interference. See if, yeah, Carter gets his hand in there before that ball ever arrives. That should have been pass interference anyway. But a tremendous catch by Torrey Smith with one hand. Under seven remaining in the fourth. Four-man rush. Flacco, Stokely, breaks a tackle. He's going to get the first down. It'll be first down inside the 20-yard line. Well, all of a sudden now, it's starting to work the other way as they work inside on the Broncos linebackers. This has taken a really interesting twist here, Al. We're one touchdown away from it being a one-touchdown game. And it looked like it was way over. Six and a half remaining. From the 18-yard line. And set up a screen in a lot of, with a lot of traffic over the middle. Ray Rice, the intended receiver, it'll be second down and 10. And I think I'll redo my math right now. <laughs> it would be a touchdown, a conversion, and a field goal. Two-point conversion. They're one of those things. One right. of those two things is the case here. Well, that's Gainesville. No, never mind. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Second and ten. Blacko to the sideline. And the 
gravity home there. Ray Rice down the sideline, but the pass is incomplete. It'll be third down and ten. Really nice job by Sean Phillips out here. They had a pick. They were going to pick him and send Rice down the boundary. He was able to split past the pick and stay in coverage. That's a big time play by a veteran player. Third and ten. Flacco is flushed on the run. It's caught, leaps to the 12 yard line. Now you've got a fourth down. It's a three possession game. If you kick a field goal, at least you make it a two possession game. So what does Harbaugh want to do here? Fourth and four. I think you go for it. Probably. Here, don't you? Yeah. I mean, because the assumption that Peyton Manning is not going to go the other way, you, you probably are even starting to think about onside kicks and such. Right. I mean, you, you are going to need a field goal at some point, but you might as well go for it here. Fourth and four. Tom Fox had to call a timeout because he had a player in limbo. Malik Jackson was trying to get off the field. And really, that was an opportunity. If Flacco could have somehow snapped that ball, he would have had him off sides and had his first down. Right. First, the play of the night. Well, a lot of plays of the night, but the one that would have wrapped this up and sent everybody to the parking lot was this would-be touchdown on the pick six by Trevathan. Dropping the ball, bounces out of the end zone. Would have been a 32-point lead. Ravens get it at the 20, go 80 yards, have it back now in an 18-point game, trying to make it an 11-point game. And now the field goal unit's going to come. So it's interesting. Denver took the timeout, and maybe I don't know. Harbaugh is going through. You go through the math. You still you need two touchdowns and a field goal, and, and a two-point conversion thrown in to tie the game. So you're going to need a field goal at some point anyway. And he figures, okay, maybe here. Yeah, well, maybe he's saying I'm going to have to recover two onside kicks to win the thing anyway. So why not? Yep. You can see both sides of this. 30-yard attempt is good. So now it is a 15-point game with 5.29 remaining in the fourth. We will be going to North Texas on Sunday night. The Giants against the Dallas Cowboys, America's Game of the Week. Gary Underwood will get us started. Football Night in America will get it away at 7 Eastern time. The way they finished last year in the East, Washington at the end winning it. Final night of the season, knocking off Dallas. Well, you know, we've done a lot of Giants-Dallas games through the years, and it's always great. I mean, the Giants and the Cowboys, it just sings as a rivalry, and well, we'll see if Dallas can finally knock them off at home. A lot of optimism in Dallas. They've been uh, singing a good tune down there, feeling like they've got something going, so no better way to find out than against the New York Giants. Should have, uh, we understand, about 100,000 people on hand at uh, the newly named AT&T Stadium, which is, uh, of course, the most magnificent place I've seen it's in incredible the world. it really is it's gonna be a little warm down there too I know Michelle Tafoy is looking forward to that oh yeah Hans team is out anticipating the the onside kick here off the foot of Tucker I tell you I always thought well now they've got them lined up but you have to get spread that's the new rule you can't just maul over somebody the kangaroo hop it Nope, he's going to kick it off normally. And what they really look for right now, obviously, is another fast three and out. Get it back, and then you go for the onside kick if you, you're able to score. That's interesting to me because they're down to two timeouts. So it's almost the case now where first down ends it. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's. it's a couple of first downs would end it. Yeah, I mean, not end it, end it, but I don't know. It would be interesting to see if Peyton Manning decides to go run it three straight times again. Maybe he does have that kind of confidence his defense can just get it done. Or maybe just some short Fuller. passes because Fuller. you want to stay in bounds Fuller. and you want that clock to keep Fuller. moving. Fuller. Oh, my oh, what are we? Whoa. <laughs> first down. Yeah, you had Monte Ball, and that almost resulted 
in a little bit of a disaster, and the crowd doesn't like the play calling here. I'm not so sure Monte Ball didn't go to the wrong side of Peyton Manning, and he kind of had to quickly shuffle around there, and that was almost a disaster. Monte Ball at least had the presence of mind to slow down and wait for that handoff. A little surprising maybe to see the rookie in there, but apparently he is their runner. When they get to where they're going to try and run the football, he's the guy. Second down and eight. Manning taking the play clock. All the way down to two. And then off the play fake throws, and then it's dropped, and that stops the clock. Eric Decker couldn't hold on to it. Third and eight. Eric Decker's had a rough night tonight. You get the man coverage, you know that they've got to come up there and play the run. And this one right between the eight and the seven here. Nobody around. Dropped the touchdown pass earlier. Well, well, well. A big third and eight with 442 on the clock. Pick up the blitz, flag is thrown. There's your first down and a lot more for Demarius Thomas. He'll go all the way to the end zone, but a penalty marker at the onset of the play. Uh-oh, Peyton just saw the flag. That would be 78 yards for the touchdown. Here's Coleman. Offside, number 58, defense, lined up in the neutral zone. The Pillars decline, touchdown. Elvis Doomerville is the guy who lines up offside. And for Manning, seven touchdown passes. He's the sixth man in NFL history to throw seven in a game. There's Doomerville right there with his hand over the red line. That is offsides, and that is basically the same touchdown pass that Peyton Manning threw to Demarius Thomas last year in the opener. Went about 80 yards with that one. And that was, at that time, the 400th of his career on opening night last year. So Doomerville lines up offside. <laughs> Manning saying it shouldn't have been this hard. And the kick is good. 49 to 27. Joe Cap, the last to throw seven in a game. Back in 69. There it is. The great Sid Luckman in 43. Adrian Burke for the Philadelphia in 54. The Hall of Famer George Blanda in 61. The great Y.A. Tittle for the Giants in 62. Joe Cap for the Vikings against the Baltimore Colts in 69. And tonight, Peyton. Peyton on pace right now for 112 touchdown passes this year. <laughs> yeah. What do you say? The guys come out mentally, directed the offense, had plans, in my opinion, fooled the Ravens on a couple of them, and has just played brilliantly. Well, John Elway, you keep Peyton around long enough, Elway will have no records in the book, in the Bronco book. It's a great night for Peyton Manning and the Broncos offense, but I know there's has to be a few questions now on this remade Ravens defense as well. They, they'll they get better. You know that. There were too many chains for it not to have an impact against a quarterback like Peyton Manning, but they're going to have to go back to the drawing board here. Thomas has scored. Julius, two touchdown passes to make. Demarius, two. Walker, two. Caldwell, one. So uh, let's roll them for you. Here are the Magnificent Seven. Started early. Julius Thomas, maybe a wee bit of a surprise, but probably not after the way that he played in the preseason. They knew what he could do. Probably number four on your list is Andre Caldwell. He got one. Wes Welker. Atoning for an earlier mistake, got two in a row. Then it was Demarius Thomas' turn for a couple. The only guy really not having a night tonight is Eric Decker. And Flacco will go to work now from the 20-yard line. And Rice makes the catch for a gain of six. 
But if they didn't convert on the third down, it would have been very interesting. Yes, it would have, but he did, and it's not. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Look the way you got to that conclusion. <laughs> Second and three. And down the sideline for Smith, who's covered by Carter. And it will be third down. Well, the, the Baltimore Ravens, Harbaugh took over. This is his sixth season. And they've been at or over 500 after each of the last 75 games, or almost his entire head coaching career, longest active streak. You go back to the beginning of his his rookie coaching season, Flacco a rookie as well. But they'll go to 0 1 tonight. And that is dropped, and the flag is thrown, and you got a couple of them there as Smith gets held on to by Tony Carter. Well, they had to take some chances in the secondary. They had to play some man coverage to get added pressure. Pass interference, 32 defense. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. And they got away with it. The, the man coverage was brilliant. It was better than what the Ravens were able to put out there. And a guy who I think is one of the unsung heroes of this game is Dominic Rogers Cromarty. I can't remember him giving up a single play in this one so mm -hmm. far. And when you can have one side of the field shut down, it makes it easier on the rest of the field. And that's incomplete intended. For Leach. Uh, Rogers Kamari broke it as a rookie, went to the Super Bowl in the Arizona Cardinals into Philadelphia. And then he comes here in a big acquisition. Thrown out only one time tonight. Yep, and there's a reason for that. When you're covered, you're covered. When you start now thinking about pairing him with Champ Bailey uh -huh. and having the likes of Chris Harris and Tony Carter coming off the bench, mm -hmm. it's it a little crazy. Second and ten. And Rice will take it to the 27-yard line. You know, this was a very, very good defense. You know, a season ago, ranked number two in the league. And in reality, when you're talking about yards per play, because they had to defend so many more plays because of the no-huddle offense on the other side, it was the number one offense in the NFL. And... They have picked right up even without Von Miller. Third and 11. Flacco gets sacked. The ball comes loose. The Ravens recover. Sean Phillips comes in. He got him earlier and gets him again, but the Ravens keep possession. Fourth down. Well, for Sean Phillips, his night got easier when Rick Wagner came in the game. But he has shown up in a major way. And if it only works for the next six games and Von Miller replaces him, so be it. But this has been a big night for him. It's been a big night for Robert Ayers. When they needed it, those guys delivered. And Wes Welker is back to receive the, the punt off the foot of Sam Cook with two and a half to go. holes in the fair catch at the 17 yard line so the Broncos opening on this Thursday night don't play again until a week from Sunday at the Giants Oakland comes in here then Philadelphia comes in here they go to Dallas you got Jacksonville so uh, not a bad early season schedule I mean every coach will say hey, every game is tough and all that but you get Oakland Philadelphia and Jacksonville at the beginning of the season Hello. How do you think the uh, AFC West is feeling right now after watching this? Right. Uh, at least a year ago, you go, oh, Peyton's got the bad neck. Maybe he can't make it, and we're going to bring him back out there. I'll, I'll bet you for one play and let him leave the field and get a little ovation. Well, they'll run a play that should take us to the two-minute warning. The ball. Taking down about the line of scrimmage, getting us to the two minute mark on opening night where the Broncos had a strong third quarter. 
Got a little scary in the fourth after the Trevathan play, but have it well in hand right now. 49-27. To interview with Michelle after the game. That's the mm -hmm. that's the goal when you play uh, on NBC Sunday Night Football. You hope Michelle's talking to you. That means you've won. Now Peyton saying that on uh, Tuesday at the uh, team facility, and Michelle's already gargling, getting ready for what will be the Peyton Manning interview at the end of the game. Like a dream come true. Second down and nine. And right up the middle goes Monte Ball. Pushy Chevy. Nice job by these guys up front, too. We talked about it a little bit, but uh, the idea of bringing Luis Vasquez in, Manny Ramirez working at the center position, Zane Beatles, and Ryan Clady, Pro Bowlers on the left side, Orlando Franklin did a nice job on the right side. You keep Peyton Manning clean, he's going to do some damage. <laughs> Peyton plays it all the way to the end, takes a timeout. And he wants another no. touchdown pass, break that no, record. No, no, no. Something happened there. That was a little strange. Got him. Yeah. So third down and eight. Gase is younger, actually, the offensive coordinator than, than Peyton is. You know, but they really had no choice because for the sake of continuity alone, you know, think of how long it took to understand the mind of, of Peyton Manning and, right. and all the things he wants to do in this offense. And he was the quarterback coach last year, and you know they didn't want to start from scratch. But I tell you, Adam's done a nice job. And this will end the game with that first down. Thomas makes the catch. Demarius Thomas, first down, and now he can run the clock all the way out. The Ravens, who started officially after they went to Cleveland, but they uh, re, uh, reset the franchise clock with all the records. So it begins in 96 with 49 points allowed being the most in Ravens history. So not the way you expect the defending champs, the reigning champs, to open up. But then again, you run into Peyton Manning, you run into the Denver Broncos. They're down by three at the half and wind up winning the game 49 to 27. Impressive. And for John Fox, maybe a chance to exhale after all the tough memories of that playoff game the entire offseason and big questions, a lot of pressure on him to succeed this season We're off to a great start 49 27 is our final score from the mile high city the wendy's post game report coming right up quick